What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the After Chat. This is your opportunity to get your questions answered live. And yeah, we, we do text on YouTube, we do Discord chat, and then if you join us on Discord, that's the best way because in all these situations, just like Jason's email in the last uh, the last show, there are complexities to this that we have to go through, and we need to understand, like, are people willing to take this journey with you? Are you going to want to go cheap? And then, yes, please have a dollar amount. We do need that. Uh, all those things. There's so many questions we end up going back to the person to ask clarifying points. And so it helps. It helps if you're on the uh, the Discord. So go ahead and spool up them Discords. Get your internet a churning. Um, Discord is a free service. We've got a, a really great server. It's one of the larger ham radio servers that are out there. And uh, literally, people 24-7 just answering questions, having fun with radio, doing the best we can to help people out. Blind people can't use Discord very well. Oh, man. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I saw your question earlier. And, uh, yeah, I think there was uh, Frank said he was going to um, also try and remind me of that. So I don't have that radio and, and in, in question. Ventures in Blind Videography says, uh, anyone know a way directly to enter a frequency on the FX4CR? So if we get lucky, there might be one K6ARK in the house that he might be able to even ask the developer on that one uh, to see if that's something they can do. I don't know is the is the is the right answer, and I don't know that it has an audio output to indicate as you're as you're twisting the dials on what you get. Plus, also that is going to take you a very long time. So let's go ahead and get in the Discord, say hi to our friends, and then we'll uh, we'll try and take that one right off the top since I saw it. Let's see, we got. Uh, Okay, I'm going to put go. it in place of my vertical. All right, we're already, we already, it sounds like we already got questions going. How's it going, everybody? Hi, Josh. Hey, how's it going? Um, Three. Did we see, is, is uh, Adam around? I don't see him. I do not see Adam in the chat, no. Okay, well, uh, does anyone have the 4XCR that knows how to direct <coughs> frequency input that thing? I have a 4XCR, but what did he say? Direct frequency input? What, yeah, the, op the operator is blind, and so they need uh, capability to be able to enter a frequency without having to obviously see the screen. Let me ask, uh, let me ask Adam. Hold on one second. You guys, anybody? Nobody? Bueller? I'd like to phone a friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text her. I'm going to DM a friend. I mean, it's got cat control over Bluetooth. You can make an app for it, but I don't know if there's any way just out of the box to do it. All right. Sorry about the dead air there. Wanted to make sure we at least get the uh, the wizard working on the uh, the potential answer if there is one. All right. And well, go ahead. That question came from Shane Adventures and Blind Videography. He's been on the car show yeah. before. He's a really cool guy. Yeah, absolutely. I believe we helped him out a couple of times, uh, on or at least once. Um, it wasn't last week. It was week before that, I think. Anyway, yes, you're, thanks so much for bringing up the question. It's a good one. And, uh, yeah, anytime we can figure out ways to help people in, in different ways is, is value added from my point of view. That's why Orlando was so much fun this year. It was just simply amazing what people have come up with. So anyway, this is the proper after chat. You've made it. Thanks everybody in the discord for coming out. And uh, yeah, what we like to do is to kick off the whole show. We like to go straight to the discord and say hi to anybody who is new here for the first time. We give you priority to get your questions asked and answered. So if you're new here for the first time and love, would like to come up and introduce yourself, and if you have a question, we'll take it. So who wants to be first? Go for it. Oh, no new to, no newcomers. So all the hammer questions have been answered. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Dan, KC0KYN. Just want to say hi. I've been listening, gawking from afar for years and thought it's time to actually get over here and say hi. Well, thank you very much for coming out. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions that come up, feel free to just 
say something and we'll try and help you out. All right. Hey, uh, Josh, this is Lars, K-E-2-C-Q-L. I can actually say that <laughs> hey, now. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, one, I did put in for a vanity call sign, so that may be changing. So I've, I'm waiting for that. Um, but I wanted to give you an update and I have a follow-up question. Well, go for so, it. So uh, the FTM 500, I was texting you back and forth a uh, couple days. And remember the SWR issue I was having with my uh, antenna? Uh-huh. Um, as it turns out, I bought the SBB5. And that seemed to have completely solved my problems. Oh, uh, so it was the antenna. I believe so. Mm-hmm. I believe so. It, the the SBB5, I, I hooked it up. I did a SWR test, and it was on both 2 meters and 70 centimeters. I think I was averaging on 2 meters, 1.4, and on 70 centimeters, it was 1.6. You know, on... Uh, that was the highest it went within the you know within the band um so i was happy with that no problems there um my question is one how often do people even bother checking the swr on their mobile radios is that something that people even bother looking at they <laughs> they do but um i don't think it's as big a deal as you were worried about for reasons that that you and i kind of talked about um over text um that it's kind of a wide band, widish band, and it will it will it will slide. the 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 antenna will only be resonant in a certain spot of it, and you'll start to get up to some upper ed- ends on the edges, and um, the radios will handle it. The radios will take care of themselves. You're not going to let you know. It's not going to let it damage itself. So you're you're generally okay. But where possible, particularly if you're homebrewing an antenna, you you do want to be considerate of that and work around it as best you can. Yeah, the uh, well, the SWR on the was it the B10? I think that was the one I had. Uh, I think that was the number for it, the Comet B10. I think the lowest SWR I can get on that was 2.8. I'm guessing that that's also a byproduct of that one being a very short compromised VHF UHF antenna, and that's probably more to do with why it had those issues than not. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad the SBB5 is a fantastic antenna. Yeah. I tested All that right. one. It's great. So good. Thanks for the update. Do you have a question then too? Uh, my question. Well, my question was grounding the antenna. Um, I I was it was recommended to me to uh, for ground for when you're when you're setting up an antenna ground uh, to bond the ground to the chassis uh, so that the radio itself and the antenna share the same ground and it's yes. bonded. Yes. Is that, now, I, this is beyond my comprehension a little bit, so could you explain further, please? Or anybody can explain further, please? Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll go around to uh, to other people if they want to add their thoughts because everybody has a thought. So you said the, there's uh, there's one topic that everyone has an opinion in ham radio on, and yes. it's grounding and bonding. Um, yes. So, yes, you, you're go- we're going to have some, some hot takes here. By the way, I pulled up this website. K0BG is the the Bible for mobile radio installations, and I'll drop the link in the chat. Anytime I've had a question about mobile radio installations, I will oftentimes go to K0BG or Shane, (laughs) and uh, I'll I'll get answers that way. It's a very good resource. The, The reality is, for a lot of things, the grounding and bonding on VHF and UHF don't matter that much, except... If you are getting a lot of interference that you're picking up on the radio, like if you turn your squelch off and your your noise floor is just like through the roof, like just lots and lots of noise, some of that could be with components in the vehicle that are not connected via the ground, if you will, or the return um, of the radio. So you mitigate that by electrically bonding things like doors, hoods, trunks, the fram, the fr- the fram, the frame to the chassis, um, that kind of stuff. It becomes more evident when you get into the world of HF mobile that you really have to look at the grounding and bonding. On my uh, Nissan Leaf, I bonded all the doors, the hood, and the trunk lid so that they were all one cohesive electrically connected unit. And that helped me out significantly with some interference I was having. It also helped my ATOS 120 to perform very well with the tuning up and down that it does. Okay, so would a good test to be, um, because my radio is hooked up to the battery directly, mm-hmm. uh, I, can run the, I can run the radio with the car completely off. 
Um, mm -hmm. I do know that when the car is completely off uh, and I turn the squelch off, I get a lot of noise. I don't think that has anything to do with the car itself, or am I wrong? If the car is off, no, likely not. All right, so then a good test would be to turn the car on and see if there's any major change in the noise floor. Yeah, but again, you're going to have less problems with that with uh, VHF, UHF. So it, it, even if you're experiencing some stuff, it's it's not that big of a deal. Right. No, I get that. I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm learning this on the UHF VHF lane of this so that in the future, if I decide to go to HF, I already have this knowledge from the uh, higher frequencies before I delve into the more lower frequency stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm training myself now so yeah. I don't have to figure this out later. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, really good. Now, there, there is a, um, you could have some weird passive coupling by having some floating doors and metal components that are not electrically bonded to the quote unquote ground of your vehicle that could present weird um, reflections or weird issues with antenna takeoff and transmit capability. That's possible. Um, so bonding that stuff is never really that problematic. It's very easy to do. K0BG actually has a really good guide to that. And if it may even be, God, he's got so much stuff. Let me see if I can. Oh, and of course, they're images, so I don't think it's going to. I can't just search for ground. But you look at this website. It just goes and goes and goes. Oh, wiring and grounding. Did I find it? Yeah, there it is. So here's here's the specific link for the wiring and grounding. Um, I'll drop that right now so you guys can take a look at it. If you'd like to read this, read it on your own time. It's a, it's a good read, I promise. Right on. All right, thank you. Yeah, got a super chat from Brian G. Thank you, man. $10. Appreciate it. Hello, Josh. Thanks for your continued guidance. I use LMR 400 for my connections inside and outside of my shack. Looking for superior cable for inside without loss. What are easier to... Oh, oh, without loss that are easier to work with. So something that's a little bit more flexible. Well, um, let's see. I, I did see one K at MRD in the house. K at MRD, what's uh, what's your take on on that? I'm I'm sorry, I was answering uh, PB Shooter's comment there. What was the question? Mm. Oh, I could read it. So they use LMR oh. 400 for uh, outside and then like to the shack, and they want something that's low loss, that's easy to work with inside the shack. Um, I mean, you don't really need well, what frequencies? First of all, that's true too. He but, didn't say uh, if it was VHF, UHF, or HF. <clears throat> We do need that uh, clarification, for like, Brian. For, uh, you know, just jumpers and things, I use um, the Messiloni Ultraflex 7 Sahara. Pretty much the same physical size as RG8X, but um, much better performance. I also like uh, ABR's uh, LMR 240. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. So I'd, I'd rock either one of those. When you get into the bigger cables, and, and someone's saying 213, when you get into the bigger cables in the shack when you're making connections, it's really cumbersome. Making those yeah. tighter bends and things. Like I'm looking at my watt meter right now because I've got Hyperflex 10 connected to it, and it's like literally leaning backwards because I have to like kind of prop the coax against the back wall to kind of hold it up because it's so heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but I just have that Hyperflex 10 going from the meter all the way out to the antenna. I don't have any jumpers for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I would use something smaller than that. You're, you're not going to notice any losses with, uh, you know, a, a, a 3 or a 5 or even a 10-foot a uh, run. This Brian. is... <laughs> This is RG218 has... from ABR, and uh, I use them for jumpers. I've got about 10 of those that I've used in different capacities. Go ahead. And Frank. Brian came back with just jumpers on HF. Oh, then oh, you, yeah. you're then almost you're golden with anything. Oh, okay, with respect. I would go ABR, obviously Messi and Poloni. Uh, Mike gave you the good recommendation for what he uses, and the 218 is great um, from ABR for, for jumpers. Yeah. Is that 218 a solid core, though? Oh, good question. I don't know. I am not a fan of solid core it, for stuff like that. I mean, if it's going to be moved a lot. That's a good point. That, yeah. That solid core can and will break eventually if you're if you're moving around a lot. I can't. It, it doesn't feel like it, but I, I would say most of my cables are not solid core. I have very few solid core coax cables these days, but um, yeah. 
You can, um, oddly enough, so here's here's a total value option on this. I was at HRO recently in Anaheim, and they had uh, spare cuts of coax, just loose random cuts, like ends of spools and, and other stuff like that. And they were selling it at a pretty sizable discount with no connectors, right? But the good news is that the connectors are really cheap. They're, it's much cheaper to just get a spool of coax and lots of connectors and crimp them yourself than to buy pre-cut stuff. So if you get these loose spare pieces, you could crimp the own your own ends on it, and you could save a ton of money over time by doing things that way, particularly for jumpers, because you don't need a lot of distance. All right, we got a couple of... Uh, well, let's go back. Thank, thank you, Frank. I saw the at, and then I was like, why is he adding me? I realized it was to a question. So thank you, Frank. No we'll problem. get back to those. <laughs> All right, is there anybody else that's in the chat that's new, like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. This is Dan, KC0KYN. I did come up with a question. Um, thinking about doing crossband repeat. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the ICOM IC2730. Yep. And I'm just wondering if there's another radio I should consider. Uh, I have no desire to do digital modes. I just want to have the luxury of being able to use like a smaller HT, like my uh, VX5. I'm also kind of considering maybe trying to find myself a VX3. Uh, but my goal is to find a good crossband repeat uh vhf uhf uh radio and just wondering if the 2730 is a good solution or maybe i should be checking out some other models uh i have the 2730 it's what i would use if i was cross banding i don't do cross band repeat very often so take that for you know what it's worth is there anybody who does cross band more frequently on the chat right now I do crossband repeat, but I use my Kenwood D710 or an FTM500, so I'm of no help. Well, I, I think they were also used, used, looking for other options. The FTM300 will work as well. Um, it's... I'm using a 5100 for crossband repeat for my car. Uh, IC5100A, or I think that's what it is. Okay. So other options, the FTM 500 is going to be a lot more expensive than the 2730 price-wise. And if you're really the only thing you're looking for is cross-band repeat, the 2730 is perfect. The uh, FTM 300, Josh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I think I'd probably still go with the 2730. Yeah, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just no, no. Another... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other options, that's true. Oh, the Linko Doctor, you. the Doctor Three, uh, seven thirty five, seven three five. I like that they have Dr. You just call them Doctor, Doctor seven thirty five. Um. Okay. Next, anybody else in the voice would like to say hi or ask a question? We'll take you guys first, and then we'll go catch up with the chat rooms. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, I'll poke my head in here. This is uh, Kale Four SF. Uh, name's Mac. And I am working on a uh, new modem implement implementation that will hopefully compete with uh, Vera, Vera HF, and uh, RDOP. So, oh, well. right on. Well, thanks for joining us. You want to talk a little bit about that? Or if you've got, do you need any help with anything um, that you need folks to take a look at some stuff? <laughs> help is always appreciated. Mm -hmm. But no, uh, basically, uh, um, the, 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 um, the high level overview of it is that. I am looking at making a, uh, a modem controller, uh, which will include the waveforms for military standard 188.110D for a uh, serial point-to-point uh, -point modem, and uh, 188.141D, which is uh, fourth generation automatic link establishment wideband. Oh, so yeah. With, what with the uh, FCC's new, uh, new proposed rules to the limiting of... Uh, Bandwidth to 2800 hertz for amateur bands was a bit of a bit of a uh, blow to that because I I really would have liked to oh and I to be fair I probably still will make the modem capable of uh, of doing up to a 48 kilohertz uh, broadband or wideband channel uh, through either a single radio or slaved uh, participating stations um, basically individual radios that you know would just each have their own essentially digirig connection and you would just spread the the channel across all of them. Um, but that's what I'm working on. Uh, 
I guess other interesting details is that we're building it cross-platform uh, from the from the get-go. So um, looking at using uh, a uh, um, a web app bundler called Tari for those of you that have heard it. It's kind of like a better Electron. So we'll be able to write the application uh, mainly using web style development. Uh, uh, it'll be packaged in Tauri, and then from there, we just would have uh, OS-specific um, I.O. drivers, right, for the uh, uh, for the serial link and for the uh, audio link going to the radios. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's uh, Minute Modem, and, and it's accompanying waveforms. So, yeah, after we get that all finished up, the plan is uh, to then contribute those protocols to... Uh, a, uh, I'm not sure. If, uh, actually, maybe some of you all know uh, about the program or the project uh, OpenRTX, yeah. and uh, they're, they're, they're build targets for M17. Mm -hmm. And I am looking at making an OpenRTX build target for the Zygu G90 uh, SDR HF radios. So hopefully, uh, we can have arbitrary waveforms running on the G90 um, once we target that. But we're just working on the. Uh, on the PC based program for now, Minute Modem. Nice. Well, um, thank you for sharing. And when you got an update, please come back or DM me if you've got like a an alpha candidate or something you want people to look at. I'd, I'd be happy to take a look. Would definitely yeah, appreciate absolutely. that. And as, as far as help goes, um, we're primarily building it, like I said, uh, through a combination of. Uh, well, actually, I don't think I touched on that a whole lot. We're looking for folks that know Rust, if anyone knows oh, okay. digital signal processing. Uh, you know, primarily using the Rust CPAL framework, uh, uh -huh. that'd be super helpful. And anyone that knows um, really any kind of like, you know, web uh, bundled uh, web front end development. So sure. uh, reactive frameworks, uh, we're looking at using Leptos primarily, um, which is uh, kind of a, a WASM based framework. It's uh, It basically puts a binary inside the web app and makes it much more performant. But uh, yeah, anyone that, that can do any of that, hit me up, DM me. Uh, Actually, you'll probably have to hit me up on the server first. Um, but hit me up, friend me, DM me, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so he's, he's Cypher was uh, his username on Discord. And give your call sign again if people want to reach out via QRZ or something. Uh, I am not on QRZ, but... Uh, but that you is are on it. You just don't know that you're on it. <laughs> they make an account for everybody. You just haven't, you haven't set it up yet. <laughs> Well, let, let me rephrase that. My, the, my QRZ account does not have my email or any other user okay. supplied information, so it's just going to be call sign and name. Oh, okay, all right. Well, then hit them up here on the Discord. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that uh, that update. That's awesome. Okay, um, let's see. Anybody else that'd like to say hi? First timers, first timers, like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Hi, Josh. This is Jeff uh, in Zero JLB. Uh, first time here, I've been a technician for about 20 years and uh, kind of got silent for a while, kind of getting back into it. I'm really interested in uh, parks on the air. Um, so working on getting my general. Um, my question, I guess, would be uh, I have a F, uh, Yesu FT100 uh, that I acquired uh, not too long after I started, uh, probably 15, 20 years ago. What would be the recommended antenna that I go with for now, an infed halfway, a vertical, or something else? An FT100. I thought that was one direction, but now I'm thinking something else. Uh, oh! It's uh, all mode, all mode, yeah. VHF, UHF, HF. Well, what do you plan on? Is it going to be something that's in your home permanently? Is it a portable, out of your car? Is it backpacking? It's, what do you plan on doing? It's a mobile uh form factor and i was thinking of doing parks in the air with it okay well i mean the sky's the limit almost so if you live in an area where you can put antennas into trees then a simple throw line with a n-fed half wave is always nice i am still just a big advocate of telescoping mass like carbon fiber telescoping mass and you put the end of your wire on it and just shove it into a tree all a mike kate mrd uh, those are great um, there are freestanding antennas that people generally love, like Wolf River Coils. Chameleon's new adjustable vertical is really, really nicely made. Um, there's always the Buddy Stick Pro. Anything you want to do. If you, in fact, if you if you really want to have fun with it, does it have a tuner? Unfortunately, it does not. Okay. It's old enough. Okay, I was gonna. Well, 
even older radios had tuners too, but um, I mean, you could go full doublet if you wanted to. And we know those get out like very, very well. So th there's like, literally, it's just a question of like, think about the parks in your area. Think about what it looks like for you. People that are not like me actually have to contend with weather. And so they like freestanding antennas or not freestanding, quick to set up antennas that they don't have to futz around with very much. For me, I'll go stand out in the, in the, in the wonderful sun out here and, take as much time as I need to do what I got to do. Um, but, you know, it's all it's all a question of how portable do you need it? Do you need it to pack down? Is You know, do you want to stick with wires? It's, it's kind of up to you. What are you thinking? Probably start with an infed halfway because um, I'm out in the middle of the, middle of the country. I'm in the uh, middle of Nebraska, kind of by the Kansas border. So a lot of our parks have trees and stuff, but weather is another big part. So... Mm -hmm. I might end up going uh, mobile at the um, when it gets colder and just staying in the vehicle. But um, yeah, just kind of looking to first time get on HF. Yeah, so uh, an infed half wave is probably going to be a really easy way to go, and they're inexpensive. You can buy kits online like coffee and ham radios, K6ARK. Jason Cam for ACK, who I had on the show last week, has one um, that is, I, I mean, it's easy to get started with that, and then you can decide where you want to go after that. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. Been watching a lot of YouTube between you and Mike and um, everybody else, so just getting lots of ideas. Thanks. It looks like he didn't. Oh, he sold out. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna tell people to go check out uh, KF4ACK's EdFed because he sold out after the live stream, though. So that that makes sense. What's up with Pac Tenna? Do they have any in stock? I haven't checked in with them in a while. Pactena is also great. I love the Pactena. Let's go to their shop real fast. Maybe <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh, wait. So the Lynx uh, dipole is in stock. The mini random wire, the nine to one un un, is in stock. Sold out on the Enfed half wave. So that the the random wire is not bad. I mean, you know. Mike will tell you a story about that, but you know you can you can make a go with that. The problem with the random wires, you do need a tuner, but um, yeah. Uh, let's go to let's go to the let's go to the Discord chat for any other recommendations. We got Mike; he's a fantastic uh, pod operator. So let's go to him first. What would you recommend, Mike? The one that you're looking at that's sold out. <laughs> the uh, the Enfed the Pac-10 Enfed halfway. I mean, listen, there there's a reason. You see me constantly using the same antennas. Like, yes, I review, you know, I, I'm probably up to about 100 antennas that I own now, or, or, or very close. Mm -hmm. But the Pac Tenna and the DX Commander Expedition are the two that I'm always going back to. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, everything you said is right. I mean, I, I would just rock some kind of NFED. Um, and, and it's, I would be shocked if you just stop at one antenna. So. NFED Halfwave is a great solution, whether you get it from Coffee and Ham Radios, K6ARK. Yeah. Uh, the Chameleon Lightweight NFED Super is a great one. A little uh, considerably more money for what it is. But um, also look on eBay at 10 Tennas, T E N N Tennas, as in Tennessee antennas. Um, oh, yeah. I use his antennas for, for my home, and he makes some that are a little more portable. And they're very inexpensive, you know, 35, 40 bucks maybe for the transformer. You do need to add your own wire and trim it to, you know, cut it for 40 meters or, or wherever you want it resonant at. But, uh, yeah, that's that's my advice. Or, so, I mean, there's a reason I bought the Wolf River Coil. This was my first antenna. They're great. So, so we got the Apollo NFED Half Wave. It's a kit, so you will have to build this. Keep in mind, guys, they have two left, and it's $80. How fast can we sell out of that thing? <laughs> That's Chuck, a rate. Chuck, and they're gone. Uh, they're Chuck, gone. <laughs> Chuck is going to hate you for that one. No, there's only two left. They start to get I, mad I, about I, that. I would also say, you know, even if you don't want, okay, you want an Fed, try their new Poseidon. It's a vertical, and it's doing pretty darn good. If uh, Don were here in the chat, he could tell you about it. Needs a tuner, though. Yeah, we're going to pick a tuner oh, really cheap. Another quick question. Would you recommend getting a tuner first or an analyzer? Analyzer. Analyzer, analyzer, every time, analyzer. Comment. Tuners are overrated. You don't need a tuner. You, well, okay. 
You do for some antennas, but there are so many antennas you can work through to the point that you need a, a, a tuner. I'm not against tuners in any capacity, but an analyzer is a tool that will help you grow your brain parts and make you a better operator because then you start building and the tuners where are the analyzers where it's at. Go ahead, comment. I just spent the afternoon in Oklahoma doing a park. I got a hundred and some contacts with 10 watts out of an IC703 on a DX Commander Classic. And that classic also doubles when I'm not using it as an infed half wave. That's my suggestion. And you won't never have, you will never be without a great antenna. If you get an infed and something like the DX commander classic or expedition, like he was, uh, Mike was talking about. There you go. Uh, Mike, what was, what was 10, 10, like T E N N it's on eBay. But yeah. X 10 is good too. Yeah. Well, um, you've, you've reviewed all of them. <laughs> Uh, there's I, I, 10 tennis. A budget? Yeah, uh, you go to eBay and type in it. 10 tennis, Tango Echo November November. There you are. So what's what's your that's a good question too. What's your budget on this? Right now I don't really have a budget. I'm I'm thinking trying to keep it under, you know, two, three hundred dollars. Yeah, um, okay. So that's why I, I was looking at the Wolf River coils for vertical or all pretty much all the antennas infeds that you've been looking through because like i said i've been watching a lot of mike's videos yeah. and they're and they're really good for that you should watch his videos for sure i've got uh, one suggestion then if you ahead, look at the ahead. chameleon the chameleon and pass light system you uh, actually get a vertical as well as an NFED with but the that's, matching unit. but you need a tuner for that uh i'm running it on a 57 and my swrs are well below two i you you still generally need a tuner with that. And that's um so you have had good luck with it, but ground composition plays a factor into that antenna. And if your ground composition gets to a point where the SD, uh, SWR starts creeping up, you need the tuner to bring it into line. It's not that it's required, but even if you go to the manual, they call out that you need a tuner. For, I believe, 40 meters and a lower, but either way, it's fine. I just want to throw it out there as an option. That's true. There are, there are some sure. the ATU, the ATU tuner for, um, that you can get on Amazon for about 100 bucks. I've heard pretty good things about that as well if, you, if you're looking to get into something as a starter. Uh, I, I think there's so many options that you don't even have to go down that road uh, for these antenna. Like, there's so many options that are available that are under $200. Um, Mike mentioned, or it was already mentioned, the lightweight NFED sloper from Chameleon. It is more expensive, but it's got the wire and that uh, center transformer bit actually will function as a center for a dipole or an NFED half wave. It comes in the NFED configuration, but you could cut it, um, cut some wire and make it a dipole real easy. I've ran this when, if you watched my, my video that I did on 10 meter POTA when I was running off the truck for power. Um, this is the antenna I used. It, it's it's great. I, I also took this up to my dad's in Big Bear. It's it's, it's great. Uh, most of the NFEDs are pretty good. From all the companies we just mentioned, all the ones we showed, they're all really good. So you kind of just pick your favorite and go with that. And and I think Mike's probably right. You'll, you're never really just going to stop with one. You'll pick up a couple of them, and there'll be a backup to a backup kind of thing. When I first got my, uh, my ticket, I... I uh... Threw something up temporarily because I knew I was going to be moving in like three months. And I used one of the Nelson antenna um, uh, nine to ones. And it worked great to the point that I, I've got several Nelson antenna transformers. I've, I've also got what was it a 49 to one for doing. I can't remember the ratios but but they're they're not super compact but if you're like me and you're real hard on stuff mm -hmm. they're tough and when it gets torn up you just cut a new piece of wire so you you do need a tuner for the nine to one but for the in, in fed half wave you you don't mm -hmm. well hey it's Can good I to hear you too andy question oh one second it's really good to hear you k booty we haven't heard you in a while i i, I saw you in there and i'm like oh we got to get to saying hi to him so there's my opportunity it's good to hear from you Thank you. Good to see you. See you. Yeah, I can barely talk. It sounds sorry. like you're fighting a cold, too. Are you all right? My, my allergies are terrible. Oh, like, yeah, man. I'm drowning on my own face. All right. Who, uh, somebody wants to carry on with that question. Go for it. 
Hey Josh, it's Dustin here. It's my first time on the channel, KK4IFB. I had a similar question um, that he just asked. So I'm building a shack for the first time, and my local radio club uh, has recommended they're actually going to build me a doublet. But everybody says, like, the resistance are so high on those. I just bought an ICOM 7300 which comes, it says it comes with a, uh, a tuner with three to one. Is that going to be sufficient for that antenna or like the MCOM three, which I want to use for mobile? Probably not. Okay. Um, for a doublet. So ha have you thought about how you're going to get the feed line in? Do you have some kind of converter to coax box that it's going to run off of? What, what are you planning on doing? Well, honestly, I haven't. I, I originally started out with just going with like a, a chameleon infed antenna, and they were recommending doing a doublet. So they said they would build it for me. They said, well, you can build it. It's easy. I said, well, I, I can't build it. So they're going to build it for me. Okay. So now I just got to get the setup to, to make that happen. Okay. Uh, I want to clarify. Did they say doublet or dipole? No, it was definitely a doublet because okay. I keep talking about how agile it is and how, you know. So the, it the works thing, really. The thing with a doublet, and maybe I can find a picture of one. So, uh, I need an image of the feed line. But, 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 oh, this will work. This will work great, actually. So, this is a traditional doublet kind of installation. Can I make this big? Can I embiggen this? Oh, come on. There we go. All right. So, a doublet as you can see it here, is a ladder line, okay? That, that It literally looks like a ladder. Do you see that? Like the It looks like a ladder going down. There's usually some kind of a unit attached to that ladder line. It could be an antenna tuner, or it's going to be a converter from ladder line to coax. So it's going to take it from an unbalanced connection to a, sorry, a balanced connection to an unbalanced connection in the form of the coax. That's then going to go into something, right? Like a tuner, whatever. There's a myriad of ways that you can handle that, and Don already mentioned one of them. Um, we use a, a four to one ballon from those balanced leads into a coax connection that you hook a coax up to, and then with that, you 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 don't have as much issues. Um, your tuner is still probably going to be involved though to get it into the band space that you want it to be. So you, you generally are going to run a tuner with a doublet. Okay. He did he did say I would need a ballon, a four to one ballon. He did. Okay. So then it's definitely a doublet. Yeah. Okay. So um so he's just going to give you the the part you see on the on the image here. It's going to be two long lines that you hang up in the air as high as you can, or based off of how high the ladder line is, and then you're going to have to connect it to a four to one ballon. Um, and then from there, that goes going to go to coax inside your shack or whatever. That's one option. Now, in those cases, <coughs> I would probably <coughs> excuse me. I would probably point you towards having an external tuner to do that work. That would be my recommendation. And there are some tuners that have built-in balance uh, that can just be connected to the ladder line but from a convenience factor that often doesn't work out when you're trying to go into a home like through walls and whatnot that's why we use coax with that said still i would probably still recommend you go with like an ldg tuner like a 100 watt ldg tuner that can be controlled by your radio that way you're putting all the heavy lifting on the tuner to let it do its job and your radio is just in non-tuner bypass mode it's possible possible that radio, the radio you have, can accommodate that doublet, but most radio tuners are only a three to one or better match, and they're not going to take you to what you need, which is probably closer to like a ten to one match. So, and and most external tuners do well beyond that, so you, you'd be good to go. Um, I'm going to throw my two cents on the. It's it's frustrating for new hams with the antenna tuner thing because they'll obviously want to gravitate towards, oh, the radio's just got a tuner in it. Those three-to-one tuners are really for, there's ice on your antenna. It's raining. Something's throwing it off a little bit, and you just kind of have to goose it. But yeah. but they're not good for using an infed. They're, just, they're not going to be able to tune those up. Yeah. 
that's that's usually what I, I say to people is just get yourself a see if you can find a an inexpensive tuner, maybe a used tuner, because they, they don't really go bad on you. Um and that would be that would be what I would do. Oh yeah, and, and if you look in the chat, so everybody that's on the Discord, if you go to uh hashtag live dash stream, there's a text chat, and Eric is dropping pictures for his setup on how he does his doublet. I'm really uh Eric, are you on voice? Can you answer as to how you're just running the twin lead into your home? Is that legit? The two wires are pieces of the doublet to just go right in? It would be easy to go through a window with window uh, window line. Uh, yeah. He's not in voice chat, but that's what it looks like. Yeah, he said yeah through the wall. Oh wow! Okay, good, good job. Uh, so, okay, keep in mind, ladder line gets really affected by adjacent metallic objects and other things like that. So you oftentimes will try and keep a lot of that ladder line business outside, and then bring it inside, and then do what you got to do, or have an external tuner or something along those lines. There was a clarification, um, and yeah, I kind of, and I don't know that Andy meant it that way, but uh, disagreement on internal tuner not being good enough for NFED half waves. So. He was talking about end feds. An end fed half wave generally doesn't need an antenna tuner. Sometimes you use it to goose it, and that's exactly what Andy said, by the way. But yeah, fair fair point. Like random and, wires, and I doublets. Most, yeah, I know I what you meant. I know what you meant. Most of them, not all. Yeah. I just want to make sure okay. we're accurate. <laughs> so. uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I was going to say uh, a handful of my radios that I've messed with ICOM 7300, the Yazoo FT710, the IC705, they've all tuned up my NFED half wave with the internal tuner, no problem. Yeah, NFED half wave is going to be different than what we're talking about with a doublet or like a nine to one. A nine to wire. one is what yeah. I was thinking of. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there is okay. Go ahead. There, there is the little thing like he was saying to touch up on the infed half wave. If you've got it tuned for fourteen, I'm sorry, zero seven four bottom of the band in in uh, forty meters, it may or may not tune up correctly in twenty meters where you want to play SSB. So that's what he's talking about. It's the little touch up. You got to you know yeah. hit the infed. Yeah, it's it's. By the way, when to deploy a tuner or not to deploy a tuner is something you learn from doing more often than not. You pick it up from just using the radio, um, but but some antennas generally require it, right? So a doublet is likely going to need it, and a random wire end fed is going to need it. End fed half waves, if they're cut appropriately, they don't generally need it. Comment. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, good. We got a, a proper doublet user in the house. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to mention one thing that the previous question from the other guy, you didn't finish mobile. You told him about dipoles and then double half and oh, end, you're right. End half waves, uh, but you didn't finish his mobile uh, comment, which I will say with a radio of, of the Frog 100, the F, uh, um, basically, any if you recognize the area, it'll work. Um, but uh, for mobile use, if you've got limited budget, then ham sticks are the way to go. Uh, as long as you mount them on the car, obviously properly, and do all the proper earthing that uh, Josh will explain. Um, that's the best way to work in your car until you can afford uh, one of the more decent electric screwdriver antennas, um, which will work with that Yesu. Okay, hold on, but, before, um, hold on. So El but Jefe? Otherwise, otherwise, yeah, that, yeah. those will work. Yeah. El Jefe, did you mean mobile that your radio is going to be installed in the mobile and it the antennas need to be on the vehicle? Or did you mean it's a mobile-sized radio that you're going to take out and do a POTA? It's a mobile-sized radio that I was going to do POTA. Um, I might put it in the vehicle, um, and I did see that the ETS 120 is also available, so or hamsticks. But, yeah, I was looking more for parks on the air and um, just taking well, it uh, – Working so, mobile stuff. So you had mentioned it's a mobile sized radio. I think that's why the question came up. So you can do POTA just from inside your car. You don't have to get out of the car. You could just do it that way. There's plenty of people who do it that way. Right. So I, I just wanted to make sure you're you're gonna go sit at a table somewhere and do POTA outside of your car, is what you're talking about. Weather yeah, weather permitting, as long as it's uh, not snowing like it, it ended up doing today. Okay. 
a second coming. I'm oversharing, but I just want to point out that if you're going to use hamsticks or an ATOS mm -hmm. for sitting at a park bench, you're going to have to set up some sort of ground plane. I, those not, those things are really designed. I for don't the think car. that's what they meant. That, that's what they, they. That's what Mike was talking about. Was for a, a mobile. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. For yeah. Yeah. I've I've used both for Poda sitting at a park bench, and they're mounted to the car, and I'm sitting at the park bench. <laughs> I, I get it. I, it's a good clarification because there's confusing terms. So uh, shutting up now. I'm shutting up. No, it's good. It's good. Okay. Hopefully, we answered all the. Did we answer all those questions sufficiently? Is everybody satisfied with their answer? Can I? I, I thank you. Uh, I'd sorry. I'd like to hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I said, did we answer those questions first? That was to El Jefe and the other person. You guys good? I'm yeah, good. Yeah, Dustin's good. Okay. All right. Now you can go ahead. <laughs> um, he was talking about a Wolf River coil. Um, and if he was wanting to do, it is a versatile system I've been looking at. Uh, I don't need anything, obviously. I, like I said, I got the DX Commander and an NFED. But the Wolf River coil is, you could, you could run it on your car as a mobile. And it's mounted correctly. But there's also, there's, really cool things it's like oda phone or something i think is what it's called where you take two of them and you can go 43 in there's and it sets up like a dipole similar to what the delta loop is on they, they've got all kinds of really interesting things at wolf river coil that uh if you're looking at that kind of stuff it's a cheaper option than the chameleon stuff i've, I've looked at all of it but i haven't used uh, any of it um, like I said, why do I need it? I've got an Infed and a and a, a DX Commander Classic. So okay, but but that Wolf River coil looks pretty nice, and so does the what's the one from Australia that just came out? Um, oh, that's Mad that. Dog coil. Oh. Yeah, Mad Dog. The Mad, Mad Dog. dog. <laughs> I've got okay, one of set up on a on a vertical, and it works pretty well. The Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. That's what he should come out with one that's that goes up to 20 meters only called the 2020 that would be good all right uh let's see i'm gonna uh change gears a little bit because there's a really good question from sufo sufo says i know you're talking about more advanced stuff um don't worry it's not that advanced it's just a further progression um i passed my technician's test today congratulations and i'm interested to know what you consider your top three two meter 70 centimeter mobile radios boy howdy um that's a, a loaded question because it kind of depends on what you want to do with them. So in front of me, I have a ICOM IC2730. Uh, I own an FTM400, an FTM500, and an ICOM5100. Those are all spend? pretty different radios. They all do slightly different things, and they're at different price points. Um, for me, if you just wanted a simple analog, really nice performing mobile radio the icom 2730 is hard to beat it it looks good in a car too the screen's real bright it shows up well um if you want aprs capability you pretty much have to go with the ftm 500 i know i know everybody the 300 and 200 does aprs too um i could probably give the nod to the 300 as maybe being more user friendly your mileage will vary um and then let's see the third one third mobile I don't know. I gave you I gave you a bunch of options. Fifty one hundred. Go with that. Check it out. Now you didn't say your price point though, so that's this is where you're going to get in trouble because you didn't tell us how much you wanted to spend. Does anybody else want to recommend their three favorite mobile radios in the in the Discord chat? I just got done researching all this. So I can I can chime in. Yeah, go ahead, Lars. All right. So depending on price point, if you want a, uh, based on my research, if you're looking for a budget, uh, radio for your uh, mobile rig. Uh, there's an Anytone. Um, I'm drawing a blank now on the on the model, but the any there's an Anytone for like 180, which, uh, let me look it up real quick. You just got done researching this, and now you... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. That's late, dude. Is it the 578? 778. Yes. Yeah. So um, the research I did, the Anytone 578 would be a good, uh, good choice. Um, I could not find it, in my opinion, for my use, I could not find a middle of the road one that was still being manufactured that I liked. Uh, and then of course the high end, which is the one I got, which was the FTM 500, um, 
but based on my research was seemed to be it was either that or uh, or the icom uh number is eluding me but the anytone five uh the anytone is a good one if you're looking for a budget two meter 70 centimeter and it's uh not gonna that's cheap you know, too yeah with uh, him saying he's not worried about the price, just quality. I would go with the Kenwood D710 GA, one of the FTM series, 300, 400, or 500, 400 if you can find it, and probably the ICOM that everybody's been talking about. What is that ICOM called? What the hell's in 2730? 2730. Does it have to be new? Uh, no, I don't think it has to be new, but just keep in mind that if you're talking to a new ham, then, you know, try to try to go new so at least it's under warranty. Right? Are they interested in digital at all? I just asked. What yeah, I'd like to give a nod to the TYT 9800. Uh, yeah, it's still it's still a workhorse. That's true. I was going to say, if it doesn't have to be new and they're comfortable with it, uh, could look for a, a nice used FTM 400, which I think is honestly better than the 500. It is. would be wary of those Anytone radios, too, because they don't have a detachable face, to my knowledge. Like, you really going to want to mount that big old hunk in your car? Big hunk. We want that big hunk in our car. That was actually the reason why I didn't go with the Anytone, was because I, for my vehicle, I needed a detachable faceplate. Otherwise, I would have went with it. That that is a good well, point. Is... A lot of what we said so far all is external head units. So there's a wire that goes to the to the radio. What about the six thousand three AC? Why does everybody think these these little tiny radios are big? Try to put a one hundred one D in your car. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I got to go back a step. When I say what's your top three radios, I don't mean the top three radios you're lusting after. I mean the top three radios you've actually used that you would recommend. So mm -hmm. if you don't have any stick time with it, it's okay. Uh, yeah, there's there's so oh. many options available, but like if you don't use it daily, like you're not a daily driver of it, it's okay. Just don't 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 add more to the noise because it just elevates the complexity of it. And he does say he would love to be on digital also, but I didn't ask him to specify which kind of digital. Right. So <laughs> throw digital in there too. Yeah. So he wants to do FT8, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, FTM 400 is a workhorse. If you can find a used one, get yourself an FTM 400. They're fantastic. If you if you like that spec sheet, uh, the FTM 500 is pretty much where you'd line up. If you would like really convenient radios, the 2730 and the ICOM 5100 are some of the more convenient radios that that I've I've used. I do apologize. I don't have any stick time quote unquote I, on no, the lower I, radios. I but. went with I, I let you go because you said you were researching it. But everybody else is saying like how about this? How about that? And it's like, well, do you do you use it? Do you actively use it? I went with you, Lars, because you just went through the process. I, I that comment was not meant for you. Yeah, I I use my FTM four hundred daily, so that that's a that's a given. But, it's a great radio. And then the uh I just got a twenty seven thirty A and I am really liking it. It's good. It's, it's great for the price. It's yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, unfortunately, they just had them on sale at uh, uh, R&L. And, they? you know, now now they've gone to, I think, the 5100 they've got on sale. But I, I didn't like the 5100. I, I preferred, honestly preferred the 7100 over the 5100. And I realized the price is way different. Way different. But the screen and everything else on the 7100 to me it was just as good as the 5100 so i just really didn't see the need in running both radios because i was running both of them in the car and i just didn't see the reason and i yeah. got rid of the 5100 i just really didn't like it but that was for two meter 440. Mm -hmm. the 7100 acts the same way as the 5100 in that regard but you know, it was uh, to me the seventy one hundred was real easy to program, and sure. it does everything pretty much that the fifty one hundred did, except DPRS. And who the hell cares about DPRS? I uh, the ICOM radios are very easy Blow to program. Blow your roll there. The, the fifty one hundred is extremely easy to program. I'm sure the seventy one hundred is fine too. But well, yeah, I found some really good software for the seventy one hundred that's free. Um, and actually, it, it runs the radio, even if you're 
just sitting at your computer. You can run run the radio from that software. Oh, okay. But uh, so it's kind of like the uh, uh, the those uh, IC fifty one or that that stuff that you used on the seventy three hundred or whatever. Uh, but it's written for the uh, uh, seventy one hundred. And he's also got one for the seven. Anyway, I shouldn't. Okay. Yeah. He's also got some for the seven thousand. But right. uh, it just makes the radio real easy to program. Yeah, and that's a. I mean, that's so. Somebody also said nine nine one alpha seventy one hundred. Those are fantastic radios, but those are like HF and VHF right. radios. So they come at like a much higher price point. And for a new technician, guys, you got to remember the question. A new technician, I wouldn't necessarily throw in that direction. That's me, though. Yeah, you know. My so. point was that I've had a fifty one hundred, and I didn't particularly like it. That's okay. all. Okay. Well, um, see, you've got but... actual user experience. I like that. Right. I appreciate that. So, right on. Get a QYT off of Amazon, and when it stops working, you take it out and shoot it. I've done that several <laughs> times. <laughs> and that's and that's actual experience, right? That's actual user experience. <laughs> yes, I I have. Uh, what, what was the phrase you used? Um, I don't. Remember. Now I want to say hammer time. Oh, that's hammer, hammer time is good. Stick time. Yeah, stick time. Yeah, 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 stick yeah. time. That is actual stick time. I put a bullet through several Chinese radios. Yeah, and that's... I've had, and I've had plenty of stick time with both the uh, D seven ten and the FTM five hundred. Now, I, the fifty one hundred, not so much, but you know, I've had, I've had some fiddle time with it. Yeah, right on, right on. Appreciate that. All right, good. All right, uh, let's see. We'll, we'll go to text uh, questions in a second. I'm going to take another call for uh, Discord, and then we're going to say hi to our YouTube friends. So who, who's on the uh, the Discord voice that would like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Hey, I'm new here. Hey, we got a newcomer. How's it going, man? It's your time to shine. Uh, pretty good, pretty good, Josh. Uh, the name is Mitchell, KJ5DUP. Uh, you'll know me as Mitchell Pilot. Oh, hey, what's your, up, uh, man? Channel. Hey, thanks hey, for joining yeah. us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, I've I've been lurking in the shadows for a couple of years now, and and uh, you know, and but for some reason, I just decided within the last month to uh, you know really start to show my face. But uh, yeah, no, I just want to introduce myself. Um, I'm uh, from Brady, Texas. I'm an over the road truck driver, uh, and currently in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Just came from uh, the Los Angeles area and uh, headed to Virginia. Right on. Well, hey, man, thanks for joining us. you have any questions or anything? No, no, nothing up top. I've been kind of listening to you guys uh, uh, while I was getting some things uh, taken care of here. I just stopped for the night. But uh, if anybody's interested, I, I uh, have an ICOM 7300 and just picked up a uh, D75 in Anaheim about a few days ago. Oh, nice. Well, thanks again for your continued support in the Super Chats. You don't have to do that, and it's really appreciated. So thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, Josh. I, I like doing that with all the channels that I support. So, um, but uh, yeah, you got you. You're a pretty great guy, and so is your community. So I'll be sticking around for a while. But oh, uh, I'll let you get back to nice. it. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. Let's say hi to our YouTube friends. So uh, I'm gonna. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I missed my. I scrolled too fast. So right off the top, we gotta we gotta stop in with the uh, the K booty. We we haven't seen him in a little while. What do, what have you been up to, man? What's going on? Oh, uh, I've, I've been in hell. <laughs> just, um, my, uh, my son is a lot of work. Um, he is actually diagnosed as autistic now. So he's a kindergartner, N nothing severe, but that's why I keep missing you on the live streams now mm -hmm. is because scheduling he's here and he is straight up my ass and and then by the time i realized oh live stream tonight it's 11 o'clock yeah, central time I you get know it. and i keep missing it and i keep missing it but things have flip-flopped this week and he's not here so so here i am um ham radio stuff i i took a little bit of a break last fall and then I, i've recently gotten back into it but i you know i've got i'm one of those guys with 50 hobbies so you know i've been 3d printing things but not posting that on youtube because they don't like it so mm. that's what i've been up to that Just, kind of printing things 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more, friends. Say no more. <laughs> yes. So, and uh, yeah, and and uh, you know, but for me, the ham radio thing is all part of just you know what people like. You got a lot of hobbies. I'm like, no, I'm just crazy. You know, it goes the ham radio goes with the night vision and the, oh, yeah, the other course. stuff. So yeah, it's vision. all part of a you know greater um, super villain thing i'm working on so right. but no i'm, I'm cl- glad to, <laughs> glad to be here and good to hear from you guys and i will i will pass it along to someone whose head is not completely uh closed from uh, allergies <laughs> right on man right on uh, i have also been printing things with a 3d printer but not those type of things mainly things to do stuff around the house we've got some fun projects i made um i have this uh, really dumb i i I got really big into like EDC, you know, everyday carry kind of stuff. And there was a, there was a company that makes knives. It was like Burnley, I think it was. And they made a slingshot that has a bottle opener in the bottle, the bottom. And I just printed an ammo carrier for a slingshot that uses like a magnet. It's, it's a pretty nice design. And so it came out great. I love my printer. Oh, I love my printer so much. I'm so happy that I have a good printer now. Crazy. Um, all right. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, appreciate that, Mr. Mr. Booty. All right. Next going down the list is I see a digital rancher. How you doing, man? Hey, Josh. Uh, I'm just kind of hanging out tonight. No real traffic. I'm uh, kind of lurking uh, this evening. So enjoying the chat. And uh, But when you guys started talking about 2730s, I, I just couldn't help myself. I had, to, I had to start jumping in. So it's such a great radio. And I think everyone knows i love that thing so but yeah uh, yeah, just hanging out and lurking so thanks so much for uh for calling me out though appreciate it yeah absolutely and if you'd like to see uh digital rancher in action obviously go to his channel digital rancher please go sub and by the way everybody who mentions anything on youtube just just drop the link if you're a youtuber we'd we'd love to see it on discord um but go to go to one of the videos i posted was after the huntsville ham fest of, of digital rancher doing a satellite activation it was great. It, he's very proficient with that radio and did a fantastic job. So, yeah, thanks for for sharing that with the uh, with the audience. Right on. Yeah, you bet. All right, I think next is Frank. How's it going, Frank? All right. First off, is my audio okay? Apparently, I was a little loud earlier. Now you're a little low, but you're still completely audible. All right, I bumped it up just a tad bit. You're good. That's good. <sighs> okay, good. Doing okay. Uh, got a lot of fun stuff going on. Uh, I dropped a 50, yes, five zero minute video this afternoon. It was uh, Tim, Whiskey Whiskey 8 Lima, doing a POTA presentation at Quartz Fest. And despite it being nearly an hour long, I trimmed that down from the footage I had. Josh, you know how that can be. And I still put it out there. So if you want uh, a good POTA presentation, presentation that was recorded at Quartz Fest. Go check out my channel. I'll drop the link here in just a second. Uh, I do have chapter markers in the description so that you can just skip around to what you want to pay attention to. Other than that, I'm going to be having a video come out uh, every Tuesday with the Tuesday night uh, premieres leading up to Ham Radio Clubhouse, and then Thursday nights at 0300 UTC or 8 p.m. Pacific time, convert that into your own time zone. I'm live on my channel with the Northern California SwapNet hosted on the oh. N6 ICW machine. Oh, yeah, right on. Very cool. Yeah, I, I, I remember tuning into that, the SwapNet. There's also a SwapNet on HF, I remember. Is that the same one? <laughs> Uh, not the same one. What you're thinking of is the 40 meter swap. It's West yeah. Coast Swap Service. Yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. 7240 on Saturdays and Sundays. Yep, yep. Uh, Armand, who runs the NorCal Swap, also is one of the net controls for that swap once in a while as well. So you might have heard him here and there. Uh, WB2ZEI mm-hmm. from Sacramento. So I'm going to have that going on. And this last Thursday, before Coffee and Ham Radios came on, I was live with The Smoking Ape, checking out uh, the two Talk Pod radios I have, along with the ID50 and a Kenwood radio. So 
There's a nice little live stream titled, Is It Clean? Over on my channel with the Smoking Ape. So I'm, I'm guessing in the order you gave the radios, it's going to be no, no, yes, yes. <laughs> Sur surprisingly enough, the original talk pod that I got, the A36 Plus, it is not... It's clean on one set of power, but not clean on another set of power. You'll have, I'll have to go back and rewatch live to find out, or, you know, go check it out. But the new TalkPod A36 Plus 8-watt model, which, shocker, doesn't put out 8 watts. No way. Uh, I'm yeah, shocked. You ne never could tell that one. Mm -hmm. It is actually reasonably clean. Really? So... I, I, yeah, I'm shocked. You know, it's uh, it's reasonably clean. It, you know, Ape, Ape and I agree. It's a boat radio. If you drop it in the water, it's no big deal. Uh, but it doesn't put out the 8 watts. So there you have it. And yeah, the ID50 and the Kenwood commercial. Of course, the Kenwood commercial is going to be clean. Oh, the commercial. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I I don't know. They they contacted me again and they want to send me another radio. And it's like we're on the third one, guys. What do you want me to do here? Like I I don't know. I don't I don't I don't. I, I I'm at the point now where it's like I've got so much stuff that I can talk about that I don't really have to dip into the Chinese radios beyond what I already have. And most of the time, I still recommend the eighteen dollar Amazon Baofeng because every one of them I've tested is clean. They've been clean, and it's $18. It's like, I can't, I, it's, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, and, and, and the new the newest Baofeng is uh, not only FCC clean, but ITU clean as well. Yeah. I, uh, I, I just noticed that as well. So, yeah, if you want to see my little live stream that I did, I have that, and then every Thursday night, 0300 UTC for about an hour or so. I know that's rather late for the uh, East Coast guys, but feel free to drop on by. Team Re Team Replay is always there, and yeah, videos, I'm going to try and be, if I can, Tuesdays and Saturday afternoons for video drops. Very good. Right on. Stick to a schedule as best you can. Oh, I yeah. don't. I, I try to just upload as many times as I can a week. That's my goal. <laughs> if I could do two to three episodes, I, uh, two to three videos a week, I'm I'm good. And then I do my live streams. So I'm all set. <laughs> I, I'm not quite there yet with the uh, content and the cache, but I'm I'm getting there. I have about five videos in the cache right now, so I have to spread them out until I can get a few more done up. But yeah, so let's hear. It. I think next up will be Jeff. I didn't see him in the chat originally. All right, the other the other Jeff. We got the El Jefe, but then we got a Jeff in the house too. Jeff, how's it going, man? Ah, is he there? Which Jeff? You, you, and four POD. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, hey, how you doing, Josh? It's been Good. a little while since I've been. It has, man. Stream. How you been? Oh, I've been. Uh, I've been all right. I've been all right. I. Uh, yeah. I last video I posted, or well, it was actually a live stream. Buddy of mine uh, in our Aries group uh, became a silent key, and we did a uh, final call for him, and I I live streamed it oh, so his family could watch it. That's there's a there's been some of that going around. It's been really tough. I feel for you, man. Yeah, we we actually uh, they were going to dedicate the Sevierville Ham Fest to him, and they did. Uh, and and then uh, like the week before that, we lost another guy, KK4LZF who was one of those guys who knows something about everything. And we so, need, <laughs> we're losing a lot of those folks. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was the first guy I ever heard talk about the, uh, what is it? The, you know, when you're doing the elephant, whatever for the antennas, when you're running the, the, the three lines in parallel to give you broader bands on, on some of them long antennas. And I was like, what? <laughs> Right on. Well, um, what are you doing? Any other videos? You post anything? Um, well, that was the last thing. I've got, you know, I've been playing around. I got uh, my uh, wife got me a 3D printer for for Christmas, and you know, so I've been slowly learning that. <laughs> I'm still getting. I'm still, or maybe it was my birthday. I don't know. I'm still getting stuff for it. <laughs> nice. Well, oh, right on. Yeah. Well, thanks so. for joining us. And if anything else comes up, feel free to dive in with your thoughts and uh yeah appreciate you coming out all right, all right i man. think next is mike is that right mike yes. is next. mike go ahead how's it going mike is it me it is it is going so well 
<laughs> good. I, That's good. I am. I am very happy. Uh, first, I need to say I, I completely agree with on the Chinese radios. I was just having this conversation with someone else. I don't remember who, but I. I kind of think. I'm like I'm just done reviewing these Chinese radios. I know, right? That's what it feels I, like. It's just, I'm so over it. I'm so over it. And like you said, so I bought one of those $18 Bofangs. Yeah. After I bought that 5RM that was a piece of garbage. Uh huh. The damn thing is clean. I know. I know. It's and crazy. And it's $18. Why would you buy any other variant Chinese radio? There's just not a reason to. I mean, they all how long do the have they been making thing. them now? How long have they been making that radio now? Since 2012? <laughs> so they're Something like, like that, yeah. Before I've been a ham. And, they, and they've gotten it all sorted out now. So it just, if they, the $18 Finally. Baofeng works great. Yes. So I um, had the privilege, where the hell is it, of... Uh, Spending thousands and thousands of dollars oh. yesterday. Oh. Uh, now I'm trying to find the it picture. It has been my privilege. Uh, there it is. I'm going to drop this in the chat. The old K-Murder mobile. Kind of on our way out. Uh-oh. So I had to make an upgrade. Okay. So okay. I, just, I, just bought me, uh, I just bought me a Ford Explorer. Oh, which one? Uh, 2019 XLT. XLT. Okay. Is cool. the picture not in the live chat yet? No, I'm. I'm. I'm doing. I'm. I'm literally oh. copying the affiliate link for the $18 uh, Balfe. <laughs> Definitely get the affiliate links. So I bought it yesterday. I literally went to the car dealership yesterday to get my inspection on the K Murder Mobile, and I stopped by the used lot, and a guy came up to me. He was just there. I don't. He, I don't even know how he got there. He just materialized the salesman and we started talking and he drove me around the golf cart and um showed me a couple of cars and he showed me this this explorer that they just got in and i was like Ugh. and it was it was like in crap condition on the inside it was just it, not bad it was just dirty um so i took it for a test drive thing drove like it was awesome mm -hmm. um and the price was right and i'm like you know what and I've been, I've been, I've been knowing I needed a new car for like at least a year and a half. Like my, my Fusion is just, I'm scared driving it. It's oh. just completely rusted underneath because it's a Michigan car and all the salt oh, and crap. Yeah. yeah. So like it's time. So I just bought this. Uh, Wait, so now I'm, uh, I'm not I'm, seeing a picture. Did you drop it in the live stream chat? Or no, I dropped it in the uh, yeah in the live stream chat. I don't see it. I either. don't see it. You what the hell? Oh, maybe maybe I should hit. There we are. There, there we you go. go. With the tinting so, and the silver and the rims, that's cool, man. That looks yep, great. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's got the navigation system and everything. It's it's nice. It's real nice. That is cool. The problem is, so I bought it yesterday. I picked it up today, and ever since yesterday, I'm like, where the hell am I going to put my ham radio stuff? Like, where am I going to mount antennas? I have no idea. I was looking at it today when I brought it home. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> I'm like looking at mounts you, yesterday Mike. online and stuff. So I've got to put, I think I need to put the mounts on the hood because like the tailgate ain't happening and I'm not going to get those like roof rack mounts. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I need to, need to figure something out, but you yeah, need, who a, got a, you need question? a Shane appointment I, is what you're saying. You need a Shane appointment. Yeah. Did, 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 this, this could did, not did, be more in his wheelhouse of any vehicle than the Explorer. He could get you all set up. You need the QFI yeah. effect. <laughs> Queefy needs oh. to come out to Texas. Uh, I, I can help you with that. Is your shifter in the center console or on the column? No, the center, uh, center console. Oh, man, you are so screwed. <laughs> Why? Why? In, in those vehicles, the only decent place to put any remote heads, unless you use one of those Lido mounts, I've is already got the those. center console. Oh, Lido oh, mounts I've are great, got, I've got Lido's, dude. I've made videos on Lido's yeah. like years ago. That's old. Oh, news. I know. I know. I'm just I'm saying, concerned uh, about they're, they're my these... antennas. Yeah. Roof mount. I just said I'm not going to do. See, here's the thing where people don't listen to the questions or the expectations. Black conductor, black conductor. No, no, no. I, I, I heard you, Mike. I heard you. I, I'm still 110% die on this hill. Drill the hole in the roof. Not going to happen. Yeah, I don't do that either. Roof. Not going to happen. That's tricky. 
so I know. So like Vern, when when we were at Vern's house um, before New Year's, we installed um, Renee's radio, her VHF yeah. radio, and she has, I think it was a Ford Expedition. So there's like these metal brackets that that like bolt under the hood. So I need to I need to just call Vern. I know what the hell that was, but I was looking under my hood and it looked a little different than the Expedition. So I don't know if like those brackets will work. I'm looking online for brackets. Um, see, here's another guy commenting: roof rack crossbar mount. I said I am not putting my antennas on the roof rack. <laughs> you guys gotta listen. <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> No, you're wrong, Mike. You have to put them on a roof rack. It's tradition. <laughs> what, what, wait, wait, Mike, what if you had one of those little, like, uh, electric arms that, like, rotate down? Like, that would be sweet, but no. Do you have a bull no, bar on your you just, uh, just get one of those uh, military-style, you know, like, 12-foot whips that you just, like, literally bungee cord, you know, from your front bumper down to, like, the back of the roof. And how do you suggest I attach that? The uh, front bumper you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Mike, yeah. uh, doing... definitely not searching for advice here. Yeah, <laughs> I want to make that clear. I was making the but comment Mike, that I need to figure it. Out but Mike, <laughs> we're, we're ham radio operators. Opinion. We have to tell you what to do. And you, when you even post something like you don't know the answer, mm -hmm. we have to immediately jump in with our thoughts on what it should be. And we're getting yeah, 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 fifty yeah, different yeah. answers too. <laughs> Mike, I'm not if somebody you has a 2019 Ford Explorer, yeah, see, that's Scott just posted that in the link. I was looking at that. The problem is the picture of that uh, doesn't look so. Like, if you actually click on that link, the picture that they show mounted to the car doesn't look anything like that bracket. But that's that's what I'm talking about. What WM7C posted. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm thinking, but. Mike, I'm not giving you advice, but on my my Bronco, I use one of those Nagoya lip mounts on the uh, the hood uh, up towards the front by the trail site, and that works yeah. great for me. See, I've got the uh, I've got the K400 mounts. I, I don't think I could Nagoya on my car. No disrespect. Um, but my my trunk and or my excuse me, my hood is like rounded in such a way and there's like gaskets on it. I don't think those K 400s, I don't think I can do like a lip mount. Are, are you, are yeah, you worried about that. height? Oh, uh, I see what that's doing now. No, I'm not worried about height. I see what that's doing now. Alex just posted. Cause, cause yeah, now because I've looked under my hood again. Yeah. Yeah. It just goes in between the gap between the hood and the fender. Yeah. See, I didn't see that. Um, the, that black bit that's going over that mount on the left hand side. Yeah. I couldn't, pu I couldn't put my head around what the heck that was until I, uh, now I'm looking at it you again because I've opened up. my hood. I've opened my hood since I got it home. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm thinking of doing. And then I, I'll probably have to get, uh, and I'll probably get an NMO for, and I'll have to get a new Comet antenna. And, then I've got to figure out the SO239 situation for the ATOS because I'll have to put the ATOS on the other side. Oh, here, Joe got some pictures. Yeah. Wait, say, trailer yeah. hitch? I don't have a trailer hitch, no. But I wouldn't, put a, a, I wouldn't put an HF antenna on a trailer hitch anyway. Yeah, you can use a lip mount really in the bad. back gate as well. And I can't. Can I already there. looked. There, there's oh, really? there's okay. not enough flat surface to, to put a lip mount. Gotcha. Okay. But I would still the want the up. aerial higher than the body of the truck, and it's it's glass halfway up, so it's. Uh, Jody, how does that glass mount work? I, eh, see, Not I still well. Use my comment, and I don't. Yeah, I don't uh, think I'd go that route. Don't, I have a comment. I ran glass mount for years, and it worked great. Yeah, yeah, it worked way better than people tell you. I gotta say. What about a pinch mount on the door? Yeah, uh, like, I try. I don't. I don't know if there's enough room. I I thought about that, but I'm, I really want to have them on the hood. I think with those metal brackets. Yeah, the brackets look Jody, good. Jody's uh, Jody's interior, uh, his center console is very, very, very similar to mine. Yeah, well, the, I, glass, I, the glass, yeah, the lead I'm, mount. I'm, I'm not them. worried about mounting the radios. I'm worried about mounting the antennas. So yeah, I've got my ATOS works. on the hood. So, mounted, but I'm, and I'm using a 400 mount. Mike, you might not be able to do the ATOS on that bracket, but that bracket looks great for the hood mount. That'd be great. No, I should be able to do the ATOS. I actually have, I have two of those on my Ford Ranger. It's the same concept. I think I got them out of Canada. 
but also you can use that as your mounting point for your braid when you want to bond the hood to the fender ah, as well. So it's nice. a good bonding point. But you got a third mismatched material, so you got to make sure you put that electrical. You, you got to remember who you're talking to here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just watch for corrosion. I have done zero grounding and bonding on my Fusion, and I, I'm sure that'll change if I. There, there's more like there's more room under the hood in my Explorer than there is in my Fusion, so I can probably actually get to things. So yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that mount, and I'll, I'll probably just have to get a a bulkhead connector, an SO239 bulkhead for the ATOS for that. I suspect would work. That hole might be too close to where the hood comes down for how thick the base of the ATOS yeah. is. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's it, it might not work for that. Yeah. I Plus, was, it's, I was it, able it's to pretty do thin. It, it's pretty thin, and that thing's going to take some wind load, and it's going to start tilting on you. It will. I promise yeah. you. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what I'm going to do with the ATOS. You could make your own pretty easily, honestly, out of maybe a little bit of thicker steel with a different profile just bend it in a vice you, you, there's uh, very little gap between in in the hood when it's close too so. Uh, so i think somebody already said you got a trailer hitch or you don't i do not could you i mean trailer hitch is what i know a lot of guys do with atos and screwdrivers and vehicle unibody uh setups like this and they just put a yeah. like a ball like a like a little hitch mount on the back but then it's actually a really good ground point because it's going to the frame and they just ground the crap out of it with uh, some braid and they run the ATOS yeah, but off the, the back. Yeah, the problem with that, first I'd have to get a hitch installed. It's not that expensive. Then, if I ever want to open my tailgate, which suspect will be quite regularly, that's true. Good I'd, point. Have to take the, I'd have to take the antenna off. Yeah, so, that's, um, that's true. Like, and that... I'm so, kind of like it's going on the hood. Yeah, surprisingly, that's where I'm thinking right the, now. the ATOS, the, the thread pitch and how deep the threads go on that ATOS, when you start screwing that thing on, you are there for a good minute. Like it feels yeah. like you are turning every thread. It is using every bit of that yes. thread on that ATOS. It uses all of it. It's very impressive. Yeah. Oh, man, I'll have to think about mm -hmm. that too. I don't know. That's that's a good challenge. By the yeah. way, the the trunk the, the, is that an automatic or the that hatch? Yeah, or whatever. is it? Automatic? I don't have like the, your foot under it and it opens, but yeah, it's all it's all self opening. Okay, be very careful putting a mount on it because I did that and mine is now broken or the the lifts are broken. I and don't think I can put a mount on it. I managed to put one under the or like on the lip of it, but it pushed the thing out just enough. And over time, oh, that see. thing going up and down, it 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 wore the motors out in the lift. And but do you have uh, a Ford? No, I've got a Kia. Yeah. You've seen my van. See, that's why I I know you have a minivan, but I don't know what kind it is. Wait, which van? Uh, did you I drive which, a Don, I drive which van a Ford do you because uh, are Kia good. Sedona. Oh, okay. My wife got the Carnival. She loves it. It's oh. great. Um, Mike, you know the solution is oh no, it's a, it's a Ford, so it's aluminum. I'll say you you need the yeah. three magnet solution from MFJ to slap that ATOS right on the top of your damn oh, roof. Oh crap! I didn't even <laughs> think about that because I was just I was gonna I was thinking of throwing a mag mount on the roof just temporarily with my HT just for you know putzing around town. But shoot, you need the for, big boys. Explorers aluminum. The yeah. Explorers are aluminum. I'm pretty sure. Isn't all yeah. Ford aluminum mm. now? Aren't they all aluminum? Probably. So, and I know the F 150s and the parts. two uh, the 350s. They're pretty much the good the news is it's it's aluminum. Several the good news is it's a unibody. So if, if I if I like bond it to the to the chassis, like that's a huge bit of metal that uh it's gonna be grounded to. Yeah, that's, that's gentlemen. I have an explorer with a triple magnet mount on top. With an ATOS. Ah, there works. we go. <laughs> what year Explorer, though? Uh, mine's a 17. So Okay, so it's the same generation. Several people in the chat are saying that the, the roof should be steel, Mike. So you you, you might yeah, still have a way. Still, like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not putting a mag mount there permanently. Explorer. No. I got a 2020, and there's no not, aluminum on it. So, yeah, so but not comment. only is metal but the ribs that run along the top are placed mm -hmm. exactly for a triangular three magnet mount so you don't hit any ribs or anything. they fit right in the middle mm -hmm. i run my two meter antenna my uh comet two meter antenna on it and i run my atos i switch them back and forth they both have su so 239 okay so, so when i'm using one or the other 
that works really well. And the ATOS works without any grounding. It just works. Nice. So, Mike? Yeah, that's, that's good to know. But, but you have yeah. to factor in my OCD. I don't want coax draped across the roof of my car. Yeah. Like it's well, got to be a clean install. This is you, a. This is a. You won't even see it. So if you tuck it in along the, you tuck it in straight across along the rail. It tucks right down in the back. You wouldn't even know it's there. But Mike, but I have the same setup on my uh, Yukon, except I did put a cross member on my Yukon for my antennas. But same setup, straight down the back, down the crease of the back, easy on the coax. Uh, you know, it doesn't pinch it or anything. And uh, I bring it in from the bottom. The tailgate? A little, a little wide black tape, man, does the job. Okay. Huh. So, Mike, this is, a, this is a $50 temporary solution until you find something more permanent so that you can do okay. ATOS from your vehicle. So, yeah, you're going to have coax around the place, whatever. Um, because you're, you're probably just going to take the mount off with the antenna, put it back in the vehicle or whatever when you're not using it. But when you need it, you could just boop right on top. You're good to go. And then it's temporary. You take it down, you know, no big deal until you get something. Permanent. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've got mag mounts and stuff. I've, yeah. I've got all that stuff. Um, well, the, but those, I, those try I'm not thinking mount. temporary. I'm like, I just bought I know, a new car. I know. Yeah. I need radios in it now. <laughs> what is breed love? So I have a comment. We should check in a breed love. Go ahead, comment. So I actually have um, one of our local guys who has an Explorer. Um, and he has his mount, his K400 mount on, I think it's either the driver's side or the passenger side rear door. And I don't know for, for Mike, if that's going to matter for height reasons, because no. this guy parks in a garage. So he takes his ATOS off every time. Let yeah, me I see if I can go on Facebook. I'm going to see if I can go on Facebook and find a picture for you. All right. Okay. Yeah, so I've got diamond K400 mounts. Mm -hmm. If I can, if I can hook one of those up to my door, I might do that temporarily. But again, I kind of okay, want my go. antennas on the hood. Yeah. Okay. So the diamond doesn't rotate like the. That's not a comet. diamond. That's a that's a comet. I can tell just by the rust. Yeah, like the, the comet one, like the one I posted, it it's got a, a you can adjust it both up and down, sideways, yeah. and yeah. I've gone through. I've gone through at least two of those. Yeah. But that's why, how he has his hooked up now. to his explorers. Yeah, I hate, yeah. The, I hate the coax going through the door, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that either. But as a, as a temporary solution, I might do that because I, I have that mount. But if that works, I would just use my Diamond K400 because the Diamond K400 is literally the best antenna mount for like lip mount type stuff like that. You should and see my, how beat up mine is. I've had mine for 50, 20 years, and it still works. Your and diamond my, or your uh, comet? My comet, my comet, CP, mm. whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have that exact mount. I've I just threw one out a year ago and put a new one on it, and I just replaced that a few weeks ago with uh, diamond K400 because I have a K400 for my ATOS. Right. So I and I picked up a I picked up a brand new used K400 at Huntsville last year for like forty bucks. I couldn't pass it up. Just, the K400 is the best mount. That's All right. So I, I got it. I got it. I got it, Mike. Right, well, you, you, you go, go. You go. Um, you go with the uh, breed love ball mount. Punch a hole right through the C mount of your vehicle, and just pop that sucker in. What is it? What is the C mount? The C the C mount the the C arm of the, the C pillar. You can't, you C can't pillar. define a word with the word, Josh. Sorry, C pillar. So the C pillar is behind the the rear seats. So between the that little window in the back, you you put that sucker oh. in. There you go. Yeah, that's not happening. That's not happening. And and Mike, I will say this much: if you don't want holes, do not get Shane Queefy to come out because you will find holes. <laughs> no, he did. He oh, did. I, I I watched his install video. Look, he did look, a nice job. Alex mm -hmm. got there. It is. There's the C pillar. He's got a picture of it right there. That's what you do, Mike. Yeah, that's it's not a little happening. smiley face. It's a little smiley happening. face. You're good. Friends. It's you, only you six lost, holes. It's only you have six lost holes. Your damn oh, mind. Have you guys seen any of the metal work that I've done on my channel? <laughs> It's no. bad. I it is feel. really bad. <laughs> yeah, but, but you got six opportunities value, to get right? it right here. Oh, oh, Chris. oh no! You're a you're a master with a drill. Yeah, At, the, yeah, the yeah. Drill, a little Ryobi means not the problem. It's the headliner that you got to pull out. Or That's all the, easy. The, the, the headliner? <laughs> yeah. No. Don, read my lips. I am not drilling holes in my car. 
Yeah. And Don, my, Don, my Don, well, you, you said you have guns, right? What if you just shoot them through the car? Yeah, speed okay, holes. Just, just, just shoot some speed holes through there. You're I'll, good. I, I got my 12 gauge. I'll put some slugs <laughs> in it. Done and done. I mean, that's and what, a three quarter inch you, hole? Uh, that's perfect. You have the bucket seats in the back? Yes. Okay. Well, between the two seats, right? I mounted my 5100 underneath the seat on the uh, passenger side and uh -huh. used one of those little flexible arms to hold the head. And uh, clean installation, everything went under the carpet. You never saw a piece of wire. Yeah, again, I, I'm not worried about mounting the radios. That is not my concern. Again, my concern is mounting the antennas, and I want them on the hood. Uh, what about Ooh. rear tail light? Try that triple magnum out. You might be surprised. You can't even see it. <laughs> what, what about the Mike? What about well on the hood? What about rear yes. tail light? Rear tail light. The rear. So the 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 back. I don't know if you can see it in the picture that I posted, but the back of the uh, Explorer, the, the K Murder Exploder. I'm calling it. Good, good, good. Uh, I, I bet I already have a name for it. Excellent. Yeah. Um, has what they call a spoiler. Yeah, you can't really see it in the picture. No. But there's a so like yeah that that tail light and I already looked on that site where you bought yours. They only they only make them for trucks. Yeah. So that's not an option. You gotta get yourself a truck, man. Well, Mike, You're in there's Texas. A, there's a kit that replaces the shark fin antenna for the FM with a NMO mount. You can mount mount right there. It's he already still wants to have there. a radio. <laughs> he still wants to have a radio. Yeah. Who uses their FM? You're all streaming now. Oh, I don't. I don't like. You can put an FM. No, I use. Here. I I listen to Sirius XM, Liquid Metal, and Howard Stern, and that's it. Oh wow! Okay, I, well, I do you terrestrial don't need your FM. FM. You don't no, need but it. I'm I also two meter well, antenna work for that. How right. compromised of an antenna is that to replace that little shark shark fin <laughs> with a it's freaking a mount. bites into the metal? Oh, it's, it's an a mount. It's got the teeth. Just yeah, you replace the whole mount. shark fin with a whole new mount. It has a GPS antenna and an MMO mount in it, yeah, and it just goes through the same hole. Interesting. I don't know why you're worried about getting an antenna when you All know right. you can tune the signal stick. I gotta take. I gotta take back some. <laughs> Jeez, great ideas. Mike has so many things to think about. Everybody did a, the the best job. The best job. Uh, all right, we got to go back a step here because I saw Gray Man Pona come in. So, Gray Man, we're going to come back to you. We're still trying to say hi to the YouTubers before we get to the questions. Don't worry. We're going to hang out for a while, guys. Don't get don't get antsy in the pantsy. Gray Man, what are you up to? Man, I, I tell you, I just got back home probably 10 minutes ago from up, uh, up by Chicago. My son had a, a, a the Indiana State uh competitive well, well i don't know indiana state scholastic uh team chess championship for his uh, school he was representing Ooh, so we, chess, we just got right back on. and uh did some poda while i was up there uh was on the uh, indiana dunes uh, unfortunately and I'm, I'm staring out over white caps coming coming in from lake michigan and uh, i got called away i had to head back so i didn't even get my antenna deployed but uh just busy weekend and uh, doing that stuff, and hopefully I'll have a video probably for for Tuesday night. Yeah, good buddy, that's awesome. Good to hear it. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, I did he do well in the chess tournament, or how how'd it go? So he he scored four point five points uh, in in the tournament individually, but there it was a team tournament. Uh, okay. So he out of the five rounds, he won four and tied in one. Um, the team as a whole placed 23rd out of 40 some teams. Um, but generally the, the, the difference between like third place and 20th place is minimal. Yeah. Tenths of a point. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Uh, chess is, I, I love chess, but I, I'm not very good at chess. The kids started playing it and we are now in a situation where Edison and Ben are playing and Edison, the younger son is pretty consistently beating Ben and it's been it's there's some tensions hot tensions in the in the in the NAS household because of chess but I love this I love it great game all right moving down the line let's see um I hold on <laughs> all that all that chat about Mike's antennas 
a little uh a little interesting evening there. All right. Um, let's see. Lou, Lou's in the chat. How's it going, man? Are you on mic? There he is. How's yeah, it going? How's it going tonight? Good. How are you doing? Uh, it's, I, I'm I'm doing good. Um, today was interesting. Went out to the uh, official grand opening of the new Giga Parts location and attempted and failed to uh, to live stream multiple times. <clears throat> the uh, The highlight of that was uh, KM4 ACK jump scaring me while I was staring at the uh, the screen on the GoPro. Uh, trying to see if the audio was working properly, and I, I just see this form come, this blurry form come flying from around the end cap, and it's it's uh, Jason, and uh, that's that's kind of the highlight of the clips. I went ahead and posted them up because you know why not, but um, the rest of it I just filmed. But if if you guys haven't seen uh, either Jason, either of the Jasons uh, 2.0 or uh, ACK, their videos uh, uh, of the place, uh, and I've got a couple of them up now too, but. Uh, it it is absolutely incredible, um, and in fact, earlier tonight I got an email notice from one of the VE, uh, VECs that I work with um, that uh, they are moving their testing to the classroom at the new Giga Parts. So there's a oh, cool. very large classroom in there that's going to be hosting a lot of events. So uh, when you're in Huntsville, or anybody out there, if you're in Huntsville, make sure you go check it out because it's it's something else. Yeah, I, the ever-growing list of things that I have to go to when I get to Huntsville. So the Friday, I I guess I'm I guess I'm gonna try and cram this all in on Friday. I got to go to Giga Parts. I got to go to Bucky's. I got to I got a whole list of things that I got to hit. So, right on. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. All right, uh, Paul. Hey, Paul. What's going on, man? How you doing? Is that me, Paul? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, hey, Josh. Thanks. <laughs> um. Yeah, let me let me finish solving Mike's antenna issue first. So, oh yeah, oh, he's he's gonna love that. Please, <laughs> please do. No, he already proved he can tune his signal stick, so he really just needs to install one of those. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I did a, a, a tower climb today. We fixed a couple of our Arden, well, one Arden radio. We had to swap out the dish. The Arden radio had busted or burnt in the Texas sun or something. Uh huh. And uh, we relocated two of our ubiquity cameras, the weather cameras we use. So I live streamed that today, and my buddy Mike on uh, getting out in life live streamed from the ground the same time I live streamed from the top of the tower, and then I just finished putting together the two-hour GoPro, which was running the whole time, and I'll probably post that tomorrow. But um, yeah, Sunday night I'll probably do uh, free DV, the the digital HF app, which I started getting into and trying to learn, but I just got to I got to uh, coordinate that with my friend to to test it. So that's about it, though. Thanks, Josh. Right on. Well, thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, and then I think last on the list is uh, Tim, K0SSD. How's it going, man? Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, you know, I'm always here. Haven't done too much in radio. I've been preparing for my uh, hex beam. My hex beam is delivered on Friday. So, uh, you know, I had to buy some tools that had drill press and stuff to make the uh, mast and all that. We'll be doing videos on the installation of that, but might be a few days because uh, we finally got some snow. It's been snowing here all day, and looks like it's going to snow most of the week. So, yeah, other than that, working just, you know, working a little DX, stuff like that. So, anyway, hey. Thanks for remembering me. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. See you guys. Yeah, yeah. Now, I will say, uh, Frank has been very helpful in the sense that there are a lot of new YouTubers who are, and, I, and when I say YouTubers, I mean they're actually creating content on YouTube. And unfortunately, I haven't met all of you like in person and stuff like that. So a lot of your names, and occasionally I don't see your videos come across, even though I think I'm subscribed to most of you, just because of how YouTube works. So apologies if I don't remember everybody, but... Frank's got your back there, so I, I do appreciate him taking the time to do that. So thank you very much. Um, I do I, try what I can. Yeah, it's it's very nice that you're taking care of the other YouTubers. That's that's very nice to do that. Hey, maybe maybe yeah. you can answer one quick question for me. I do have to take uh, so like, I do have to take a potty the, break, but go ahead. <laughs> this is quick. Yeah, just explain this. We're we're doing FT8. Mm -hmm. I made a contact with you when you first started up. You were plus ten. I was plus nine, but it went through like one, two, three, done. And other ones take forever. What the heck is the difference? How how high? I was plus ten, and you were plus nine. Are, Correct. 
Yeah, yeah that's look, why. Look at your love. <laughs> that's why. Oh, <laughs> because there was no back so and forth. Strong. We just made it. We're just done. So if we don't have oh, a problem okay. making any copy, there's no there's no failure step. So like I, most of the ones I'm making right now, it, they're just boom. It's one, two, three, done. Because you you send me your, your grid square. I reply back with the signal report you're coming in at. Then you come back with your signal report of what you heard me at. Then I say RR73, and then we're done. You say 73, but even if, yeah. it's, it, even if I don't get a 73 from you, we're done. It's done. It's done. Okay. Yeah. Well, I noticed that, and it, it happens sometimes. But when I connected to you, I looked up. I go, "Oh, I got Josh." I look back, and it's done. <laughs> yeah. It, if right. you if you got a good Great if you got one, a buddy. good signal if you got a good signal path, it, it's very fast, very fast. Like so, right now okay. I've, I've got a guy. I've sent him. He's plus two to me, but um, I've now re I've retransmitted twice now, and I haven't got the reply back from him yet. And that sometimes happens. It gets into a, you know. Well, plus, you were plus 10, I was plus 9, and that's a pretty good signal from South Dakota. Th anyway, those, take it easy, buddy. Yeah, we, we uh, at plus 10 and plus 9, you and I could just talk on single side fan easily, <laughs> easily. So I'm going to, uh, oh, wow, Ham Radio for Non-Techies just did five uh, Super Chat memberships, or uh, Super Extra memberships. That's amazing. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Is he in the chat? Is he in the voice chat? I, I don't see him in here. Oh. I just asked. They, let's see here. It was P A S S D A, Sean Whelan, yeah. The Damned, The Happy Ham, and our own Mike Smith G Zero R F D got one. And Sean Whelan's always in there. Most of these people are all in the chat. So that, that's that's great. That's awesome. So congratulations, guys. And and uh, again, uh, thanks. Thanks for doing that. Appreciate that. Ham Radio for Non Techies. Yeah. Make, sure to check, make sure to check him out too. Ham Radio for Non Techies. So we're going to come back. Well, there, no one is going anywhere. You guys can talk freely, but uh, I need to run to the restroom really quick. So uh, we will be hitting a hard hitting APRS question when I get back. So uh, stick around and you guys can talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, until then, we can help Mike with his antenna. Problem. That's right. <laughs> Continue to batter him with ideas. <laughs> Don, more importantly, using you need the code to, hanger. Don, more importantly, you need to help Mike with his APRS antenna problem. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, somebody, and, posted well Mike, that, man, okay. somebody posted that little uh, lip mount or that thing that you roll up in the window from MFJ for an HT. I've oh. used those. They work really well. So I'm looking at this mount, this no hole mount that, that, the mount that I was looking at yesterday that does what I want to do. But the cable assembly is uh, RG58U, mm. which is going to be too thick to fit yeah. in the gap. I need like LMR174, preferably RG316, because it's lower loss. Um, so yeah. I might have to like buy this cable assembly solely for the connector and dissect it and make my own well did you, you the 400 that you bought the the 400 mount diamond uh -huh. didn't that come with coax that was like that yeah but it's it's um really thin stuff if, no yeah. that, that's what i want that what's on the diamond is rg316 it which is what i well, want and what i need what using. <clears throat> And so the, the, the problem is um, I don't know if the K400s will fit on my lip. Even if they mm -hmm. do, it's not what I want. I want those metal bits because just because, okay, who cares why? This is what I want, right? Mm -hmm. It's my car, damn it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't know it's an outcome. I wouldn't mind it either because the K400, it, it bounces around as it, as you're going down the road, and eventually it lets go. I don't have go, much problem. And you have Don, to, my, my, my ATOS regularly sees 100 plus mile an hour wins with the K400. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about yeah. that. Well, I've only had it happen twice, and one of one time it was on the way back from Alabama. But no. um, it uh, the the nice thing I think about the where where you're looking at is like in my car anyway you can run that cable directly through the, the there's a opening right next to the door and it just goes right through into the uh, into the uh, inside of the car mm -hmm. and so i didn't have to drill any holes like through the firewall or any of that other crap which i i hate doing that too i've done it once 
I'm never doing that again. Yeah, I was I was poking around for the, you know, the everyone said, oh, there's a grommet in the firewall. Yeah. I sure as hell didn't see one. So yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna have to go through the fender under the door and all that crap. Well, I did find the um, grommet, but I never even felt comfortable going through the grommet. Um, and it, if it's I could really find tight that fit. grommet, I would rather go through that. But to go underneath the, you know, through the fender and the door and all that crap. Like, I, I don't really care where it goes through. As mm-hmm. long as I don't see the wires, I don't, I don't care one way or the other. Mike, check I'm, under the, the, check the, under the only carpet. consideration for that is that you need to make sure that you're nowhere close to the muffler when you're riding the wire. That was the thing that I ran into, trying to get it away from the muffler to reach where that grommet was. Check no, under the carpet, either. too. Um, I know, like, I'm, I got an F-150, and underneath the driver's side um carpet there's a couple actually good uh, rubber grommets to get through easily too yeah through the thick of the floor trucks yeah. are a lot easier to work with like they are every video that i've seen of like an install on a pickup truck was just like oh they work uh yeah. oh okay so somebody's posting well something. getting getting through the firewall was a giant pain on mine was too it? but but just just check underneath the underneath the the floor on the driver's side there might be there's yeah. there was a couple of them there on my truck for some reason. Yeah. The, now, the one Mike, I've... I will leave it at this. What you want are lip mounts. What you need are holes in the roof. Oh, no, you're wrong on both accounts. I don't want lip mounts, and I'm not putting holes in my yeah. car. So comms check posted uh, the exact thing that I need. So that's I'm gonna fifty freaking dollars. That's Oh that's yeah, you didn't robbery. know about, you didn't know about that guy. Yeah, that that would go in that little bracket easily. That's what I use. Yeah, and, well, and so when you were when you were gone, the the yeah. the link for American Radio Supply with the metal bracket that I want, mm-hmm. the mount has like RG fifty eight U coax, which is way too thick to go in the gap between my trunk. Ah. I need the uh, RG three sixteen that the Diamond K four hundred has, and comms check. Thank you. Um, posted that in the chat here so that i think is the solution and would you believe i just bought a couple of those stupid adapters for my other comet uh mounts so all right cool that's the solution thank you comms check and thank you whoever posted that uh uh metal bracket um in my- i saw it yesterday but i didn't think it would work but now it, it makes sense after i've looked underneath my hood again today so see, see we solved my <laughs> i think i'm i think i'm calm, spending Josh. uh i think i'm spending about another 160 bucks plus shipping uh to get Th- that on the mounts air here. good i i used that in the nissan leaf and it worked great so the metal one the, the, the metal the, bracket so i've used i've used all the diamond brackets i've used a comet bracket i've also used that diamond c2 211 um, and and literally that that little head that goes on for the PL two thirty nine, the the without the head, I snake that through the firewall without any problem, it, or not the firewall, the 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 rear fender area, no problem. Yeah, it worked really well. Yeah, I think I think that's my solution. Now we're the on the inside of that mount. Uh, there's a long opening, and I assume that you're saying there's a screw that you're screwing that into that already exists, right? Yes. Is that ground? So if you're looking at that picture with like the red truck and that yeah. metal that metal bent bracket thing. Yeah. Yeah. So underneath that black plastic is a is a a, a screw that that attaches to. Yes. Yeah, mine doesn't have a screw have the black plastic, but the screw does exist. I know exactly yeah. how that how that would work. I may replace the the K four hundred with yeah, that. I mean, all right. As long as you know. You, I'm moving you know, on. I'm moving on. Okay, go right. ahead, Sean. I know you tried to get in there one, a couple of times. Go sorry, ahead. Ron, quick. Make sure you get the right hole size on that bracket because they're specific. If you if you get an NMO mount and you're trying to do an SO two thirty nine, sure, you'll have a, a bad day. Yeah. So I just want to pass it on. No, oh, I'm yeah. doing SO two thirty nine, and that's what yeah. this one looks like. So so get get SO two thirty nine, and then if it's not right. Uh, Harbor Freight step bits are your friend. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Already, already have them. <laughs> already have them. Hog it out. The answer to all your questions is hog it out. All right. So we're coming back with a very important APRS question. My favorite mode of operation from Lars. Lars, what's up? Man? Okay. So um, I've been. I set up the APRS in my mobile radio, and okay. it's beaconing out. It's on the right frequency. It's doing all the things it's supposed to do. But I 
am confused by something and I tried looking it up and I can't find anything on it. Okay. When I go to the settings for this radio, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's similar to most APRS compatible radios. I know Mike loves this topic, so I oh, apologize. Yeah. Uh, let me pull up the settings right now. Uh, so under APRS beacon, I'm um, sorry, no, the standard APRS uh, settings, there's the path, the digi yeah. path. Yeah. Right now, I have it set to wide 1-1 and wide 1-2, which is, from what I under, I don't understand what that means, but I was told, set it to that. I was like, okay. Okay. There's additional paths here that I can fill in. Yes. I don't know what that is. Great and, question. Okay. So, so almost, there, there are very few situations where you would have to increase the paths on that. Um, you might, you might want to uh, create a path if you wanted to say chase the um, the ISS APRS beacon. They do use a different APRS pathing system, and it's not wide. I think it's like uh, Eris one one or Ar usually Eris one one. Edit R I Romeo India zero ISS is yeah. what it is now. Yeah. So th yes, you you would create that path if you were using the ISS to pass your beacon through. Um, if someone wanted to build their own APRS network off of the APRS frequency and they had their own Digipeter set up, they may adopt a different wide system. I don't know internationally if APRS is a standard for the the rebeaconing. Wide uh, wide is basically how many times your beacon gets retransmitted before it stops. So wide two two basically gives you two hops with a digipeter versus wide one is just to one repeater and then a then a then a rebeacon. So you could have to restructure it. It's almost always wide though. I've mm -hmm. never touched that other than that those two for those two reasons. Okay, so on this radio, there is, for example, there's, I have the options for wide one one, mm -hmm. another option for wide one 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 two. Yeah. Then, like I said, there, there's four pathing options. I can set like a path one, path two, path three, path four. Yeah. Then there's full, which is taking to uh, four sets of two. Uh, so yeah, four sets of two paths. I'm assuming. So is does that mean like I could put in wide one one, wide one two, and then two other or three other? Um if I'm if I'm thinking correctly in my head, those are uh some of them are at least gonna be user settable that you can go in there and retype it, reform it if you want. Right, that's to. what these are. All yeah. of these are are yeah. usable. Like I can type these all in manually. Yes. So uh, with without, I mean, I can explain how the the wide rebeaking system works, but you're generally going to want to leave it on wide one two, and then that's it. You're fine. You don't need to do anything more than that. Um, okay. If you decide to chase the ISS with with beaconing, then you would need to create a user sys, uh, a user whatever for that application, and you would have to switch between the two. There is one exception to that with the uh, wide 1-1 one, one versus 2-1. If you're in a situation like Mike, you may have to use wide 3-1 to get three hops in order to reach the Digipeter or the iGate to get out to the internet uh, service. Yeah, so this is a very important nuanced point, and everybody listening and watching, APRS, all the traffic exists on one frequency. And if you transmit to a digipeter and you give it something like 3-1, that means it's going to retransmit that beacon three times. And if you are in an area like me that is very dense with digipeters and a lot of them are iGate compatible, blah, 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 then your beacon is going to get to an eye gate. It's going to get to the internet. It's not going to be a problem. But if you are in an area where you are unfamiliar with how well the APRS coverage is, then you may want to go with 2-1 or whatever. 3-1 is, I, I don't even know that 3-1 is even accepted on DigiPeters anymore. I think it tops out at 2 now. But you may it, want to go in, with 2. In the very remote areas like up in the sierras like the deep sierras that okay three one is still used yeah okay um so it, it and that, that's all it's doing is it, the hope 
what it's what that what that is trying to do is if you're into a digipeter and then that digipeter is going to retransmit and the idea is that hopefully that digipeter hits another digipeter which then retransmits and the goal is that it's going to digipeter hop until it finds an i gate and that i gate is going to then put it on the internet that's the goal for the uh the retransmitting of beacons that's what it's doing okay so then uh because there's an option to just turn it off and i don't see the point in that don't then. do that no don't do that i i would well, no I, I wouldn't but i just don't see i'm just trying to make sense of these options in here because it, I, I read the manual like three times and i don't it, it wasn't explaining any of this i tried looking it up and i couldn't find any definitive it, answer so to so do this. this so do this what i would start out doing is go with uh, the double hop so it's going to be two one is likely what it is uh set it to two one or whatever the the two uh, option is set it to that and then go around, do whatever it is you want to do with APRS. And if you're having a, a, a fine time in beaconing, try and lower it to one, one if you can. And if you're still able to get it out to APRS.fi or some remote ham that's way beyond line of sight from you, uh, and they're still getting their messages, then then you can leave it at one, one. Um, but anytime you need to get out further, you just keep increasing those those wide options until you get as many hops as needed to make the contact or get the information out. Okay. I think that answers my question. Okay. All right. Appreciate and looking it. at where you're at there, uh, based off of your last beacon three days ago, you're within spitting distance of looks like three different eye gates so i would say two one is sufficient in your area there you go all right thank you so i was uh shane blew up my phone a couple of days ago has anybody gotten kuwait on uh hf recently there's a station in kuwait that's making dude i saw them spotted i could hear the pile but i couldn't hear the station yeah, so where I was at, uh, I was fooling around with that man pack radio, the the Guhotek uh, man pack radio in my backyard with the man pack whip that it comes with. Literally, the whip shoots out of the top of the radio. I was hearing that guy at an S nine. Uh, Holy crap! Last night, that's how loud that guy is. Too bad you're using that radio. I know, I know. I, I was I was trying to get it going on FT eight, and I was poking around on single sideband and i heard him and I, I i threw my call in a couple of times but i didn't expect to make it in but uh yeah that guy is loud loud as all get out it was very impressive is he just nice. doing ft8 or is he doing sideband too? sideband it's just sideband and it's like the dude's uh, s9 awesome. to california wow that's that's because you got that man. beam no i was on the man pack it was on that man pack oh, vertical yeah. s9 it was crazy Uh, somebody said, is there a photo of that man pack somewhere? Yeah. Um, I, if you go to my Instagram, I have a video of me using it in the front yard. I have a video that's coming out. I'm hoping to get it out next week, but um, I'll, I'll grab a, hold on. Let me, let me grab a, let me grab the website really fast. While you grab that, I just want to say, Josh. Yes, sir. And all of your viewers, well, some of them, the ones who paid attention to my needs, my expectations. I want to say thank you for spending my money. I just ordered all the parts, cost me about $200, and I screwed Ham Radio Outlet out of their shipping because the two cables that I needed were $49.95, so I was $0.10 cents below their dollar shipping for, for their $100 for street free shipping, so I ordered some 15-amp power pole connectors only for another $7, and I saved myself $3 in shipping. Interesting. All right. Nicely yes. done. That's how they get you. HRO has very fast shipping. That is one thing I can No, they you. do not. That oh, I've never had a bad experience. You had bad experience? So I I I I just ordered some uh connectors for my diamond mounts from HRO. I ordered them on Monday. They just got here today and they shipped from Plano, Texas, which is three hours north of me. Wow, that's a long time. Maybe they were yeah. out and they got them back no, in again? No. No. They had said in stock in Plano, Texas, which is the same place that I'm getting the wires for my antennas for my uh, K-Murder Exploder. 
So it'll probably be another week. So tomorrow, I think I'm going to take my VHF radio. I'm going to get up to the cigarette lighter output, uh, output in the back of my truck. And I'm going to throw a mag mount on. So at least I'll have VHF. <laughs> there you go. Uh, here's a question in the chat. This is a, a good one. Question, is the Hermes Light 2 SDR the best radio? I don't want to be Done. limited, especially yeah. now as I'm understanding the time of day and location you're trying to reach decides what band you need to use. So if you are coming into HF like and you're still like new to it, the Hermes Light is a good radio, but it's not necessarily the easiest to use. Uh, for somebody that's like brand new, um, would it be the best radio? Hermes Light doesn't have much power output, but Don is a, an avid user of the Hermes. So, you know, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts, Don? Oh, I, I love the Hermes with the uh, KXPA 100. That's one of the best setups ever. He, he's got a fairly <laughs> and nice you know amp the joke on that, right? Uh, what's the joke? Uh, the joke, the hundred, uh, what sixteen hundred dollar amplifier? That's what. Right, right. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you you slapped a sixteen hundred dollar amplifier on a four hundred. Yeah, just because it was sitting around, it came right. with my KX three kit. But um, the I've had good luck with the PA fifty also, but I'm, I mean, the thing will work really well even with five watts on FT eight. I've done that. I I've gotten Alaska and. Uh, you know, several DX stations just running five watts out of it. So, it, you know, it, it just depends on, you know, band conditions, what band are you on, all the things that radio does. But I yes. personally prefer the so the software that comes with the Anand-style radios. Ha I mean, you compare the, the uh, noise reduction that I get on that radio or that set of software to that RM noise thing. And I swear they're identical. I, and I, it's, it just does that well on the NR2. And I don't know if it's that easy for you to implement in software in a free program. Why the hell we don't have that in every stinking radio out there, I don't know. Well, because it's, but, a, it's uh, an AI backend. It requires the internet on that application. No, no, no. The, the Thetis is completely standalone. Oh, you're talking about on the Anon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm talking about the NR2 mm -hmm. built into Thetis. Gotcha. It is just it, it it really does eliminate noise as well as the RM that RM noise thing, and that requires the internet and it's a delay. And uh, there is some delay in pulling you know stuff out of an uh, an SDR into the computer, but mm -hmm. my computer does all the work right there inside of it. And the Hermes I'm running, um, and I've got videos on this. You don't have to listen to me ramble, but um, I've got videos showing that I can run that on uh, an N6000 Celeron. Uh, my Hermi or my Anon, because of the diversity received and the other things that I'm doing with Thetis, really does need like Core i5, Core i7. So, but don't be afraid of a Hermes and a cheap computer. I've known, in fact, I've known people to even run it on the crap top. Yeah. Um, Thetis on the crap top against a Hermes and it works mm -hmm. it, with FT8. So you're you're running WSJTX on top of it. So uh, it do, it does work. I, I would prefer a little more headroom than that. So something with a slightly faster processor. Mm -hmm. But it can all be done in 12 volts. Excellent. Well, I will say um, after having jason cam 4 8 so many jasons tonight cam 4 ack on the live stream last week i went to his channel i took out my original jank apotamus the first gen the one that we bought online and it was shipped to me before micro center was selling them in person followed his procedure i've got linux mint running on it i've got a backup running it's doing its own little snapshots uh i ran his 73 linux it is great it's fantastic and the best news about all of this the the most i told him about this too he was shocked my jankopotamus i don't know i think it's because i got a really early one i have sound i can play youtube videos i can do ham radio things the sound card works no problem in linux mint it's completely native 
And he was like, that's I, that's very rare. They don't, the, the, most of them don't work. The sound cards don't work. We don't have the drivers. And I'm like, I've got the rare Jankopotamus before they made it to stores. It was Don, actually. Don was the one that was like, dude, you should check out this really cheap laptop. And it was before mm -hmm. everybody caught the wind of it. I think it was because I didn't make a video on it yet. But um, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's good, dude. It's it's yeah, actually it a very good Linux laptop. Yeah, there were like four or five guys in my club that were running around the all of the club members going, "You got to go to Micro Center and get the go go get this, go get this, go." Get, and I ignored them for like three or four months. That was then really early too. That was like before yeah, yeah. the the word got out about them. Well, that was in the days when you could pull that uh, 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 card out of it and put in a hard drive, right? I did that. Or, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I did. I bought the yes. like I bought the thirty dollar SSD, like for two hundred fifty six mm -hmm. gigs. It goes in that LTE slot, so now yep. I'm dual booting Windows. So that that SSD card has Linux Mint running on it. And mm -hmm. I still have my original SSD that's got the Windows partition all set up on it. So I can switch back and forth. It's nice. It is really yeah. nice. I'm very happy with it. And I've run, I, I've got two that uh, have that, or have the, the card in them and two that don't. And on one of the ones with the card in it, I run Linux. And on the other one, I run Linux. I always have. Yeah. But I haven't tried the 73 Linux, which... Sounds good. Now, the ones I had, because, well, again, because I spend all my day in Linux, but I knew exactly, oh, you just go get a driver and compile it and link it into the kernel. And I know exactly how to do that. So uh, I found the driver online uh, in source form and, you know, did exactly that. And I've, I've had Wi-Fi ever since. I've never messed with the sound cards just because I haven't needed to. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't. I would feel perfectly comfortable trying to figure out what chips in there and, and compiling the code for it. I'm not going to write the code for it. I'm I'm done with that kind of stuff. But um, I certainly could it, try to find the the right drivers. Right on. Well, there's but if a... you if you're saying 73 already has the drivers, I one of the one of the ones I have probably works too. <laughs> no, so I don't know anything about. So 73, I don't think he's doing anything with drivers. It's all ham radio software. Um, I did follow that GitHub. So I I, I just I just mm -hmm. followed Jason's videos to to the letter. I just put his videos yeah. on and I just followed him to the to the letter. Wi-Fi is working with no problem. I did have to do a little GitHub you know thing to pull the drivers down mm -hmm. to install that. But once I did that, oh. it was good. Um, I did find, I, 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 I did pass this on to Jason. I did have to install the GitHub drivers, do a make install, get them running, then do 73 Linux. Then after 73 Linux on reboot, after doing an app, get up, uh, update upgrade, uh, the Wi-Fi stopped working. So I went back in the directory, did a make uninstall, then a make install and then reloaded them. And it was mm -hmm. fine. It was all up and running. I was good to go. So that well, was what it's, what it's doing in make install. I know how to do it by hand. Well, but anyway, I don't. I'm not a Linux guy, so I, I just you know stuck to what I knew, and and that was it. It was, yeah. it was nice at that point. But yeah, the make install does it, and I have run Linux for on those laptops since I bought them. So I've had it running for a long time. I didn't know it was a hard thing to do. <laughs> Maybe I should have done a video on it, but. Um, and Ape, Ape was at, was talking to me about it, and I told him how to do it, but I never thought that it was such a big deal to to run Linux on, on one of those laptops because I've been doing it so long. Right on. Well, there you go. All right. So hopefully we answered that question regarding the uh, the uh, uh, Hermes. But by, by the way, I, I mm -hmm. think that the Hermes is probably – I haven't seen it yet. I may have to do it because mine's kind of sitting there being lonely. I may have to set up some kind of like Poda box for a Hermes and maybe use this micro mm -hmm. PA 50 into it to like get it, get going on the air. I think that might be fun. I might do that. Yeah. I actually took mine out to Poda one mm -hmm. time, not long ago. And again, I don't do it the way you like to do it where I'm afraid of taking additional cables out there. So I took one of my mini PCs out there. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I, I'm so scared, Don. I'm, I, I'm, I'm so not, scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you don't like it, and that's fine. But I, I took out my uh, my little mini PC and I uh, the uh, the Roadcom uh, monitor that I take out and the Hermes, and I sat there and ran uh, twelve meters for 
uh, I don't know, five, two or three hours and just made FT8 contact after FT8 contact. But I don't know if Mike will back me up on this, but damn, you do so much quicker contacts for POTA on SSB than you do on FT8 almost all day, or at least it seems yeah. like that to me. I do. Yeah. Um, CW's well, you're faster. limited with you're limited by time with FT8, mm -hmm. right? On sideband, I can make two and a half contacts a minute, right? Yeah, and that 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 I I saw the same thing because it's like wow, I I've sat here for all this time and I've only made that many contacts. It's like I should have done a lot better. And of course, I was on twelve, and I, I don't know, there wasn't wasn't a lot of guys on twelve at that time. So that might have been, I don't know, for me, I just love 12 meters. I spend too much time on 12. All right, let me jump in here. There was a question out of the Discord. Anyone have experience with the R Finder B1 Plus? Uh, I don't. R Finder Bob is a uh, is good guy. We always hang out with him when, when he comes out to the ham fest. Um, I know Jason has worked with him for a long time, so Jason's probably going to be... Jason came for ACK. Uh, no, not, sorry, no, wrong no, one. No, totally no, different no. one. Ham Radio 2.0, Jason. Oh, Jason. Uh, you need to go check out his channel. He has reviews of, of that equipment mainly. Well, and he, of, he, he daily drives one. I mean, he, does. he drives the B1. Yeah. So. Now, it, it's, it is kind of expensive. It's kind of expensive, uh, but... Apparently it does it does a whole lot of stuff. So I, I don't have one. I don't know if I get one. I haven't decided yet. But I did buy I did buy an Android phone that I will be making a, a video on. I bought it specifically for amateur radio. So it's not really gonna be like on a service or anything like that. But there's a reason I bought it. It's kind of special. So you'll have to wait to to hear me talk about it. But it uh advertises a five to seven day battery life, which that screams amateur radio to me, so I'm uh, I'm excited to talk about it. And Jason is also the U.S. provider for Bob at R Finder, since Bob's currently down in Mexico. Uh, I almost forgot, guy. and I I remembered last second. You actually had a question come across the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook. Age, oh. it, and I uh, I happened to catch it, and I just remembered it, so I'll bring it up. Does Josh have his 3D print file available for the pine sill portable soldering iron that oh. came in from Jeremy 23 hours ago? Uh, no. So, good question. Um, oh, is it on the Facebook group? It is. Oh, then I got to go back and reply to him. I'll, I'll, I'll get the link. So okay. I, I just, I just. By the way, anybody. Okay, here's here's my here's my life hack for three D printing. Just take whatever the thing is that you bought, and you're like, well, this is really cool. I wonder if there's three D prints for this, and just type in the name of that thing, three D print or STL, and then Google it, and then you'll get a whole list of things that are people that are you know into this kind of stuff that have come up with all kinds of prints that you can you can just you can just print whatever it is you like that that's what i do and so that um that solder station kit in fact it's it's like right here i'll show you real fast so i have a pine sill and i got this cool little clamshell box and it's got all the little bits in there a couple of heads for my uh uh soldering iron and that's a, a reel of solder and a little thing to dip your uh your tip into the cable's missing i don't know where the hell that went but um anyway yeah so yeah you can you can find this online if you just google pine sill 3d print or pine sill stl file and that's yeah that's all you need right on well thank yeah, you, well, would, you in, google, was... would you google ford explorer ham radio antenna mount stl for STL? me stl yeah the problem <laughs> is it, it that definitely will not hold up at atos <laughs> <laughs> At least no. not any commercial printers that I, I use know the, of. Uh, use that carbon fiber all the kids are using now. No, the mm. carbon fiber and doesn't necessarily add strength. It, it doesn't work that way on 3D prints. It's not the same because it's not yeah. woven. It's not. And then it's I, know, uh, I, I know you want to get more questions, but uh, in the list, you sort of forgot about Boondock Echo Mark. And I know uh, Scott Ham Radio from Non-Techie snuck in here too. Okay, so we'll go back to Mark... Uh, Mark, how's it going, man? We'll come back to you. We're saying hi to our YouTube friends and our other friends that are doing cool things in radio. How's it going? 
very sad. Had a bad day today. I went to HRO to wait for a friend, and he just he just never came. I got I got wrapped up. I woke up, and my wife's like, "Well, I I need you to I need you to I need you to work on something." I was like, uh, "Okay." Don't even sweat it, buddy. I'm we sorry, were, man. Was, I'm sorry. I was in and out in in like two minutes. Don't even sweat it. Um, but things are going pretty well. Uh, Boondock Echo. We've got our. Uh, engineering samples that we're waiting to get back from overseas so we can approve those and get production rolling. Uh, going to do a live show with you next weekend. Um, doing an AMA, Ask Me Anything for Sierra Circuits about uh, not exactly Boondock Echo, but if you have any questions about uh, PCB design. So that's, Ooh. I put that link up in the chat somewhere. I, I wouldn't go there myself because if you go and ask questions and I have to answer them, that's no good for me. Um, and then we had an idea for yet another new product. I don't know if there'd be any interest or not. We haven't looked, shopped it around yet, but, um, when trying to find some harmonic distortion, I started tracing five volt power supplies. Um, you know, wall warts, five volt from your computer. It's all incredibly noisy. So, we, you know, we're thinking about maybe making something to quiet all that down. So a lot going on. Nice. All right. Well, thanks again. And, yeah, I'm excited for next weekend because we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of a deep dive on the Boondock Gecko, including offline running, which I was like, oh, this is interesting. So, yeah, you could take this with you in your car, um, and then you could – plug it or just bring it home and, and give it power and it'll sync everything up for you. So that I'm really excited to hear some more about that. It sounds like a, a pretty fun thing that a lot of people will be interested in. So yeah, thanks again for all the help. And I, I will, I will be, Oh darn, I got to go to the HRO next week and, <laughs> and take care of something. Uh, great. So thanks Mark. For doing that. It was, um, it, it was good seeing you. Alex, real quick, says, you were in and out of HR in only two minutes. Hogwash. Yeah, the, the the answer to that was it was raining, and I left my wife in the car. So, I make her go in. I, I always make her go in and, and talk to people just so that they can, you know, try and try and get her uh, more focused on ham radio, which she should be. I'm, I'm just kidding. So she can monitor your purchases, huh? Oh, you she... just crack the window and you're good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> very true all right uh ham radio for non-techies is in voice man how you doing well now my cover's blown <laughs> yeah i'm doing great man i uh, just been busy with uh school and stuff about to graduate from that so that'll be fantastic i can start focusing a little more on my channel again uh i've been backed up actually i've been shooting a video for a, an antenna that i've got now that I'm i'm replacing another antenna here in the house and I've just been trying to go through the build on that. I got about, I don't know, a few hours of stuff. I got condensed down to like a 35-minute video. So I've been working on that and working around the, the you know, the, my schedule, working around uh, uh, the weather and just, you know, life in general has just been kind of getting in the way lately. But I got a bunch of new videos coming out. Most of them are going to be antenna reviews and, uh, you know, demonstrations and stuff like that. But, yeah, I'm just uh, getting back to swinging things again and just really enjoying life and just having a great time. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us out here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh Leia already knows the real prices. She's no idiot. She can she can look up all the stuff I bought. <laughs> she she's she's pretty smart. She knows. All right. Uh so that means we can go back to the to the Discord here. Is there anybody still, you know, that, that we didn't catch? Maybe you you know, you were waiting, maybe you got your audio sorted out. Wants to say hi or ask a question. Come forward now, please. Uh I'd actually have a question. Something out there for the uh R finder. Um Sure. I would be I'd be hesitant if you're planning on using it on 70 centimeters because it is rather deaf on 70 centimeters. Is that from a place of knowing or what, where's that kind place of, of knowing? Yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you have one. Yeah. It, it, it gets, I sold it because of it, but, uh, oh. it gets brought up a lot in the commercial radio discord as well. Um, there's just something up with the, uh, filtering or something that attenuates it quite a lot. Okay. I'm hearing positive and negative. Um, and really what I'm looking for is an Android device. Josh, it's interesting that you're looking for that uh, as well. And um, so as I looked across the Android device spectrum, that is one of the options that I was looking at. And I don't know. Um, so thank you for the feedback. I, oh. but, uh, as, as far as uh, ease of use, 
it is probably by far the best. Um, most of those radio enabled devices you can buy, um, they have extremely jank firmware because, uh, you know, all they do is slap an Android device together, put some random Android build, and then, you know, do very little, uh, on the radio side. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, so the, the best thing you can do if, you, if you're not getting a lot of feedback from people on a particular radio or some technology is pull them up on, e, uh, what is it, eHams, look at the reviews, or just Google things like R Finder not working or R Finder blah, 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 and see what Google pulls up for you. You'd be surprised what you find if you pretend like you're having a problem with a piece of technology. So there you go. All right. Uh, there was somebody in there that said they were new or wanted to say hi or ask a question. Go ahead. All right. So um, I actually have two questions, but the first one's kind of short. Um, the first question is, is we, we, we charge by the minute. I'm, someone, I'm just I'm just someone limit it. Someone limited um, with limited knowledge in terms of soldering, but I have soldered a few things. I just got the QDX in today. Ooh. How difficult is that to put together? It's intermediate plus. It's it's not an easy kit. Uh, it, it's okay. So I have put together harder kits, and I won't say that it's the the toroid winding, but there is a lot of toroids. So if you're not um, if you don't love toroid winding. That can be a bit problematic. Um, it is it is on the upper intermediate side of of soldering for sure. Do you have a good solder station? Uh, yeah, I have whatever my dad used to use uh, before he passed. So it's like a Hako nine fifty one or eight ninety one or one of okay. those like really good ones. Okay, okay. How and then when you say you're not very experienced in soldering. What does that mean? Like, almost give me your resume of of what like, you've done I've before. Built, like, I've built like small things, but like nothing surface mount level, basically. So you don't have to do any surface mounts with this kit. The surface mounts are all pre-installed. It's all through hole. So then I think. I mean, I guess I probably should be fine then, as long okay. as I have the right size solder and the right size uh, tip. Yeah. And and I agree with Ted. Uh, go check out some videos of people putting the radio together, and and like because there's tons of people that have built it on on YouTube that you can watch videos for, and then you can kind of follow along. Uh, it's if you're good with through hole printing, you should be fine. Okay. My second question was, um, in terms of amplifiers, right? Oh. I've been thinking about getting an amplifier, okay, and I'm wondering. If I should buy something, because obviously the price difference is huge versus like small amperage versus large amperage. Um, if I should buy buy like a like a 500, 700 watt amp amplifier first just to get started, or should I just like almost buy once, cry once, and just get like full power, like a kilowatt, and then just tune that down in order to essentially learn. How much um, drive power? When it comes you to, are you 100 watt? Uh, yeah, FTDX 10, so 100 watt. Oh, how okay, much? Yeah, how fine. much? How much you want to spend on an amp? The I have like an unlimited budget in terms of the amp, but it's more so, it's more so. Do do I start with the smaller uh, wattage amplifier or should Comment. I just buy a big one? Um, go go to comment and then. We'll, we'll come back here because I got some thoughts. What Go antenna ahead. do you have to put the amp to power into? Because if you've got four inches of wet string, there's no point <laughs> buying an amplifier. Sure. So I have, I have a DX Commander Nine, and then um, I'm also considering buying a um, a beam and like a small like sixty to eighty foot tower. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. And... Go ahead, Don. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. Uh, what, so, what coax are you feeding the the DX commander with? Because the coax matters when you're pushing power. Um, I think I have the ABR, um, whatever the thinner stuff is from, um, HR. Let me go check. I forget exactly what it is. Like a two eighteen. Well, yeah, you probably want to up go that, look at it, but. Yeah, he probably needs to go to like LMR 400 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait for him to come back. And, but 
Go ahead. And I'll say I'll say this just in case, you know, price not being an issue, buy once, cry once, you know, that that's the best way to do it. PGXL. Yeah. Um there's so many things that go along with having an amp. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like you're you're gonna interface like if you're in a small suburban home, you you're you're gonna F with stuff. Like that's just gonna happen, right? There's mm-hmm. a number of things that are just gonna be part of the process of having an amp whether you're running it at 1200 watts or legal limit or 500 800 watts it's just going to muck with stuff you kind of figure that out as you use it um i i probably wouldn't like start out right out of the shoot just like crank it up to legal limit let's see what happens it would probably be a step process to get to full power i would say though that if i was doing it all over again and i was getting another amp um I probably would only be looking at solid state at this point. I don't mm-hmm. think I would get another tube amp uh, that you have to manually tune. I don't think I would do that. Yeah. And okay. when, I, when, when I say buy once, cry once, I don't mean, you know, buy it once and go full legal limit. I'm saying, you know, get the 1500 watt amp and start out, you know, at one, two, 300 watts well, and work your way up until you find sure. that cutoff point. But but see that's that's where I'm going with this is if the if the question is I'm only gonna buy a tube amp, a legal limit tube amp versus a legal limit solid state, a little bit different, right? They're they're like almost two different animals, particularly in how you you use them, interface them, all that stuff. Particularly with the way like technology is going these days, if I'm getting an amp again, I would make sure that it's like something that I could connect to the network, that I could control it remotely and other things like that. Because it's like if you're going to spend this kind of money, you you want to have the extra features that go along with it, right? So I would almost – I would come down off of legal limit and get something that was just 800 to 1,000 watts if I had the ability to like remote into my station – which I already do with my my 7610, but if I could control the amp remotely as well, like that would be like perfect, great. Or they that they could talk to each other and that had really good reliability that they were working well, they were simpatico. Like those are all features that I would look for in an amplifier at this point. Okay, so I have so the answer to the cable is it's ABR uh, RG8X, and then um, in terms of the area, I'm in a. Uh, suburban area basically it's like i'm in the boonies basically i have okay. eight acres of land and the uh oh. the x commander is 120 ish feet away from me go oh, nuts definitely. man go definitely nuts. get for ftm or uh, L- yeah L- you're gonna yeah, want lmr, LMR 400, 400 or Sorry. uh messy and poloni the the much bigger messy and poloni cables that that will mm-hmm. be better at handling that 120 feet though so keep that in mind if the dx commander is 120 feet away from you and you're thinking about putting a 50 foot tower, then you have extra footage that you have to include in that. That's a that's a big chunk of price for a cable to spend. That's getting into big yeah. money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I can put the I can put the tower anywhere basically. I don't oh, okay. have to put it 150 feet away. It's just okay. the DX commander. To, I put I used five meter radials, so I just threw it in the cornfield and just you know kind of set it and forget it type thing. My for, man, as a temporary five meter radials. How many radials do you have? Uh, fifty two, I think. <laughs> man, okay. that is a system. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, okay, so from an amp standpoint, you're probably good, a- and the the antenna's tuned well, right? You don't have wild tune points or anything like that. Uh, it's anywhere. Uh, so I'm I didn't t- put the clips on it first, and it kind of stretched out the wire a little bit. So 40 meters, it's a little bit wonky. It's like 1.6 or so. That's but, still pretty um, good. Okay, okay. Uh, 10 through 10 through 40 on the DX Commander. It's all for the most part on. Under uh, 1.25 to one. Maybe. Okay. Um, okay. So I am I am more confident now that yes, you go nuts with an amplifier. I I don't know if you heard what much of what I said before. It's I I would probably look if if I'm gonna be dropping some money on an amplifier again, I will not be buying a tube amp. I will be getting a solid state amplifier and one that is very well coupled to my primary radio or remote 
internet connected type of thing that I can remote into it to be able to control it if I ever operate remotely. Just from a convenience standpoint, if I'm like in my home, like I my big my big secret thing that I like to do is I like to take my iPad and I like to go in the massage chair and use my AirPods and make single sideband contacts and just like mm. hang out and poke around the radio. That remotes into my 7610. And if you had an amplifier that could work with that, oh, buddy, it'd be beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. But you got to have the right equipment to do that. You know what I mean? Well, well I have a PGX decent down. amount of equipment. So is there any is there any brands that, that people suggest that are, like, decent in terms of solid state? Obviously, you know, Electric Ella, is like... Elecraft, somebody said Mercury 3. Uh, go ahead, Don, what'd you say? Well, the the Flex Radio. But, Flex. Um, yeah, the Flex PGXL. That, that by the way, is built by 403A. It doesn't actually come from Flex. They right. just rebrand it. But, uh, and they make great amps. Um, the uh, Jim just got one uh, W1TW. Gene? Uh, or, Gene got one? Or? Yes, Jim's Jean, had one. Gene got one? Oh, man. One. Yeah, right. yeah, he's had it for... Several months now. Didn't he also fry it? No, that was the tuner. The amps worked fine. No, I thought it was the amp. Pashaw, well, he only fried the flex the tuner. <laughs> well, are the flex, uh, are the flex <laughs> amps uh, compatible with other radios besides the Yes. Flex? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. It's all yeah. it's all interconnected. Like, Elecraft, Elecraft makes fantastic amps. Um, mm -hmm. Don's running one of them, and they've got a legal limit one right. that is through the roof expensive. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, works. They work great. <laughs> and there's a used there's... KPA fifteen hundred on QTH right now. I was looking at the other day. Um, the guy wants almost fifty six hundred for it, though. <laughs> yeah, the the um, those uh, expert electronics. I believe experts good too. Yeah, I yeah, I, I, are... I ran that out of the and, back of my and... truck. <laughs> And by the way, those things are a lot more available. This is one of the things you find with amplifiers. When you go to buy one, oh, I want to get one, and I want to order it and have it here in a week or whatever. It don't work that way. Oh, if you try yeah. to get a Mercury, you're out 14 months right now at least. Good the VK, point, Don. The, Good point. The VK amps are st are still available. Yeah. The VK, VK3 amps out of Australia, but you're going to ship it from Australia. That's a very similar amp. Neither one of uh, the, the regular Mercury 3 that I have and the uh, VK3 do not connect to the Internet. The Lux uh, from KM3KM, which is the Mercury guy, uh, that one does. But I would let the experts do, and from what I understand, the software is pretty good on the experts. It's no longer owned by that uh, the the guy that used to own it that was kind of uh, mean at points, uh, and his customer service was a little bit uh, on the wanky side. They're now owned by Vibraplex, and from what I understand, the all of that kind of stuff has gone away and the, the customer service is much better on those amplifiers. So, and, and just if anybody so. would want something fun to do, um, the expert that, that Chris from uh, Vibraflex sent over to me to take a look at, I ran it out of the back of my F-150 Lightning and it wasn't, it wasn't the, the 240 line. I was running out of the, yeah. the 110 and it and, worked and, great. And that is a good point, by it's the way. It's great dumb some amplifiers now my mercury 3 does can run off a of standard 110 they a lot of them uh, will require you to put a 220 circuit in oh, and as i have as one yep. i have one right next to me so that's fine oh, okay. um is it sketched to buy it used though too like how are they used uh I, depends i bought uh, if i did it i would buy it from a dealer sorry josh no no i, I i'm with you don if you know the ham then it's probably not that big a deal Mm -hmm. But like, if you're just like, like, okay, the guy that's selling the Elecraft for fifty six hundred dollars online, I don't think that I, I don't think I do that, right? Uh, it's just too, yeah. I, I know a ton I'm... of like the insider network of ham radio is like hams. You know, there's always like an amp kicking around somewhere that somebody wants to mm -hmm. sell, and you can pick up an amp and you can get on the air with it. But a lot of those are tube tube amps. A lot of these guys yeah. are going to solid state and they're getting rid of their tube amps. So you can find a tube amp really inexpensively. That's true. And so if, if you just want to play, if you want to play in this space, 
picking up a used tube amp is not hard. The only problem you have is that like tubes are getting harder to find and the price is like going up on tubes mm-hmm. considerably. Uh over the past like four years they've gone up considerably. With that said, <laughs> with that said, there's nothing really wrong with buying it retail with an amp because you usually have some kind of warranty behind it. And these are things that that are in the amateur radio area, the amp probably takes like a decent chunk of abuse. It's probably the most abused piece of hardware in someone's shack. Particularly and as tubing. far as and as far as that KPA fifteen hundred goes, I, that used price drop another fourteen hundred dollars, you can get a brand new one. You know that that just that's just ridiculous. You know, just go with the new one, you get a great warranty out of it. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've been uh, that looking at on QTH is a lot of these used prices. It's like, why would I spend that much money and, you know, not just spend the extra X amount of money for a brand new one? Hot, hot take here. Hot take. Josh, you ready for this one? Okay. Yeah. Don't use QRZ forums for uh, swap stuff. Just, just don't. Yeah. The, the I... hit and miss on that. It's ridiculous. So let let's part out a uh, let's part out a KPA fifteen hundred. <laughs> let's see how much comment. this bad boy cost us. Go ahead, comment. Comment. Uh, uh, alternate view is that you really shouldn't buy an amp until you've got an antenna system or a selection of antenna systems that are as good as you want them to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I agree. you go. Before you go and, and get your operating style the way you want, because otherwise you may turn, I'm not saying you will, but you may turn into one of those deaf guys that puts far too much power out and can't hear the reply, which yeah, there you, are, yeah, you, being European, there are far too many of. Yeah. So uh, Alligator stations. Yeah, alligators. So, Thanks so for calling me out, Mike. A fantastic no, no, Don, point. Here, Don, I know you're right. I can hear you from my house. You can hear me. That's fine. Good. You're That's... not an Italian. Yes. Putting out 10 kilowatt, <laughs> they got a five and nine bloody noise. No one can hear you, but so, they wipe the band out. Mike, this is very, very poignant. Okay, so it, I, I know that the person asking this question said that they they have a lot of land, so they probably have very little RFI. They're in a noise-quiet environment. But if you live in an area where you get on HF and you have like an S5 plus noise level, Maybe work on that first before thinking about getting your signal further out. Because the problem is, is that if you get your signal further out, the stations coming back to you could be under your S5 noise floor and you won't hear them. You're, they're deaf to you. Or sorry, you're deaf to them. So you you can't hear them. Like There's no point in putting out more power because your receive station has issues that you have to fix right unfortunately and and you know that's what makes that's what makes this the live stream today so difficult is that there's no straightforward answer for any of this stuff right it, it's it's through the process of doing it and then you're like okay i just spent we just i just pulled up the amp price sixty five hundred dollars on a kpa 5100 fantastic amp but if i live in an area that has high noise there's no point in me getting out my signal that much further because I can't hear those foreign stations. I can't hear the people that would be coming back to me. So because of that, it's like there's not a whole lot of reason to like go extra over the top in a lot of this stuff, right? That That's like buying a, a, or having an S9 noise floor and getting a step IR, right? So great. Uh, th- there's a good parlay. Works. There's a good parlay point in this. Okay, so. I have been having very high noise floor recently, again. And you know, I guys, I went through this in 2020. I had really high noise. Found out that it was a power uh, power line issue. Well, the noise, very broadbanded. I did my little audacity check on it. It also seems to be broadbanded, some kind of power line issue. So we called up Southern California Edison today, got on the phone, got, got to a human, like immediately, five, less than five minutes. And she's like, oh, wait a second. I'm, there's a thing I'm supposed to look at for this. So did you say this is like an EMF problem or an RFI problem? And I said, yeah. And she's like, we have a special line for that now. And I said, really? She's like, yeah, here's the number. Gave me the number. 
went to she's like by the way they're closed right now they don't work the weekends they work you know monday through friday i'm like that's fine so called this number a guy it was a it went straight to a a, a you know a voicemail pickup then and it said hello we're from southern california edison if this is concerning power line outages anything not rfi they're like please call this number but if you're having an emf or rfi issue we will call you back or we would like to schedule an EMF RFI evaluation session with you. Leave your name, your phone number, and your address, and we will set up a time to come out to your house and and look at your property. I was like, what? That is amazing. What? That I, is wonderful. I wish PG&E would do that in I, Northern California. I, I, I was shook, and I was like, I love you. Thank you so Josh, much. I'm I love sitting you. here drooling in envy I, at your I story. I know. I know. Right? So re- remember, guys, I worked really hard in 2020 to get the first power line noise issues solved. And and the guys that came out were great, but it, it was like five hurdles to get to the people to just come out and do a quick check and just be done with it. Right. I literally dragged coax. I had coax. I was holding coax. You're like, please, please sniff my line. Like, like I just, it was, it was fantastic. Like they, once I got them out, but it took months to get them out by the time I did. The fact that there's a dude who's just like, yeah, we'll just come out and we'll just do a thing and, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's going to love me. Cause I'm going to have my coax in the, in the front yard going, go ahead, go nuts. Here's the antenna, whatever band you want to try, whatever frequency let's go. Uh, See, I- that's funny, Josh, because when my electric company finally sent someone out after the same months, I mean, we remember my whole ordeal we talked about it yeah. on the live stream yeah he the guy came out with this like receiver thing that just he he literally plugged it into the coax on my front porch that i have for when i play front porch he had, and he's like he had oh, dowsing yeah, rods and was like he had dowsing rods <laughs> well we didn't need to use those because i had an antenna right. and he had this thing yeah right. they were in the back of the truck of course you're gonna have dowsing rods <laughs> yeah, he, he literally just came out, and he was a ham, and he's yeah. just like – he's an older dude, and he's just like – he's like, I love sniffing out RFI. Like, that's his thing. He's in I know. It. It's the best. But you These got a freaking call number for it. So I, 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 I didn't want to interrupt, but go, go <laughs> no. finish your story. Like, I <laughs> – in 2020, when I was chasing all this down, I was hitting up on, up on Twitter. I was calling, like, multiple times yeah. throughout the week to try and get to the right person, and it was only after – the first time I had this issue it was only after the dude came to my house and said, they said you got like a sparking, uh, you know, your your breakers are sparking. I'm like, no, I said that you have there. There's a power line that has a connector problem that's causing RFI. He's like, I don't do that. I'm not here. for. I only do stuff in the house. I'm like, OK, do you know who I can talk to? And he's like, no, I can't help you. And then he just walked away. And I'm like, dude, well, literally shit. verbatim. This is exact same thing that I went through and the yeah. exact same conversations that I had because they sent that dude out but, and didn't know what the hell he was talking but, about. But this is the difference. <laughs> this is the difference. That dude went to his truck and he happened to pull his phone. I don't know why he did it, but he pulled his phone out and he called a guy. And he came back to my door and banged on the door and he came in and he's like, here, can you talk to this guy for a second? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And, and the guy's like, hey, uh, so are you having like what you think is an RFI problem? And I'm like, yeah, I, I have like above an S5, uh, an S9 noise floor. It's insanely loud. It's wide banded and it blocks out multiple just megahertz of space. It's all blocked out. And he's like, OK, he's like, I'm going to give you my number right now. and I'm going to call you back and we'll set up an appointment. But it was only because that he was kind of a jerk, but it was only because that jerk called that guy. That was the only reason I got that second. Yeah. Those dudes coming back. There was no path to those guys is, is was my yeah. complaint to, to Edison. See, my guy never went to his truck and called another guy. He just was, was like, all right, I'll call someone. And then I never heard anything. So right. I called the electric company back. I don't know, a week later. And it, you, you got to get through like three tiers of people. Right and have the same conversation three times to fully confuse them enough to be like, all right, this is above my pay grade and finally pass you on. But then yes, I eventually got a hold of someone. So I think by law, like all the electric companies need to have that guy yeah, because that's a thing. RFI, it's FCC. You're causing well, supposed to. interference, you know? So it, it's, it's just a matter of like, there's one guy. 
it's for an the whole electric point. company for a region, probably. Yeah. So there, you have to get that guy. So you got to go through the motions. There's a clarification in there. What happens is if I'm just Joe Citizen and I call up and say, I think you have an RFI problem. And by the way, you're in violation of FCC code, blah, 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 that, that you're putting out spurious submission. Like that means nothing. Basically, what has to happen is the guy has to come out with the box that they brought to Mike's house and they brought to my house and you plug the coax into it. And they literally it was it's still one of my favorite things. The guy comes out and I had the coax already and I and I plug in the coax. And he's like, oh, yeah, you got you got a lot of noise. Uh, yeah, that's really loud. And, I, and, and I, I, I was going back to the shack and I realized I didn't have the switch turn to the active antenna he was just picking up the noise off the coax and i was like oh I, wait hold on hold on click and then he's like oh my god <laughs> he's like you're you're through the roof we can't even track how wide this is there's no way to track this from from this location he's like oh there's your problem you know you gave me one of those right and so um he ends up <laughs> He ends up having to canvas the whole the whole lot and all that. You know, it was it was it was a, a full day. These guys, but once they do that investigation, then that's basically when they see it happen. That's basically them saying the FCC timer is now on. They have to see it and hopefully follow the process appropriately. That they admit they have a problem. And the guy called me back like a you know the next week and said, "Okay, listen, yes, you have a serious RFI problem in your area." Um, yes, we admit we have a problem. Yes, the FCC timer has started. Um, but he's like, you know, he basically was telling me, he's like, we're working on it. Leave me alone. We got 60 days was kind of what he was saying, right? Or whatever the time. I think it was like 30 days, whatever. It doesn't matter. He was like, just, you don't have to call. We got it. We're going to get to it. It's just, you know, we got a long list of these things we got to burn through. And I was like, I mean, that conversation I I'm had like, with man, my guy. You, you take the whole time. I don't care. I'm just so glad that you came out and saw what I saw and that I'm not crazy and you're working on it. He's like, oh, no, 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 100 yeah. percent. You, you, you got a problem. We're going to fix it. We, we don't want you know, we don't want this. This is not like it's not good for any of us. And I was like, OK, we're on the same page. Go take care of it. And I was like, great. And yeah. they did. They did. You know, the sad thing about it, I have a transformer that's about four blocks away from my house, and I have been up pg and you know what about it, for months now. I have a friend, a, a ham friend, actually, that is an active pg and &E guy, another ham friend that's a retired pg and &E guy that helped me track it down, and pg and &E just won't do anything about it and it's absolutely ridiculous and uh mike side note i think you said queefy too many times someone showed up in the voice chat uh oh oh good maybe you should stick some slug rounds into the side of it oops you let all the oil out yeah 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 that, that's what i should do i mean you know a negligent discharge styly Oh dear, it seems to have gone off. Charges, unless I'm sleeping. So anyway, no comment. those are nocturnal. I, I have I have long so okay. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but remember DX Commander Callum? He did these he did these really great nets, and it was during COVID. There was a number of old hams. He was basically using this as a way to check in with older hams. And I, I loved I loved what he did. I, I would get up early, like really early in the morning to listen to Callum just make contacts with people. I've always wanted to just do a live stream that's not like a big production. It's just using the radio and having fun. And I'm just always crippled with noise. Like I'm just always just in this hugely bad noise environment. And every time I start doing the, the deep dive on it, it almost always comes back to the power company. And I've always had these massive power issues and i'm hoping that i'm on the right path that we can get back to like getting on the air appropriately because i'm kind of like a lot of you uh, that i gotta go out portable to to make contacts with people that i can just stream video where i'm picking up you know really soft stations and trying to pull them out i love that but high noise for you can't do that so there's all these people that maybe try to be talking to me and they're just like way down the noise and i can't pull them out it's it's tough so i'm hoping we get it fixed 
What do you What do you consider high? I got, I've got an S five on forty right now. So, so again, your noise is consider is commensurate to like go shut the panel off and run on a battery, right? So, right. If you go, if you go run, if you shut all your power off and you go and run on a battery and you still have that S five noise floor, then that's noise you're picking up from something else. Like it's not it's not coming from inside the home kind of thing, right? And so then the question is, where is it coming from? Is it coming from the neighbors? You got a little grow light operation down the street? Or is it from crazy solar panels? Uh, is it from a power uh, pole? You know, those are all things that you got to work through. It's, yeah, it we've, sucks, we've been, but that's we've been reality. On a, we've been working on an issue. Um, our main Aries repeater, well, one of them is uh, 145250, which happens to also be like cable channel 18 and that's one of our Aries repeaters that we use <laughs> and my ec is about 3600 feet down the street from me and uh they've moved the amplifier on the cable line down a couple of poles mm -hmm. but we're still hearing noise on on that frequency just constantly and on top of it i think i think we've got two issues because i think we may have a power line issue I was thinking about this the other day, um, hearing the noise, because it's almost like I could hear that 60 hertz hum, and it literally wiped out my receiver. Right. And I'm talking about my, my, my FTM 500, you know? It, like, I was on the net, I went to the store, and I, it just, when I got in front of his house, it just literally cut the signal down to a third. So there's my there's my journey. Uh, we'll we'll catch you guys up when we get further along. Because I just want to get back to just making just radio contacts, single sideband. I'm okay on CW because again, CW works with the noise. So does digital. But you know, single sideband makes for some uh, some good video, some having some fun out there. So anyway, that's that's the point of that. All right. Hey, what are, I, yeah. I was gonna say I posted a picture in the chat. Um, of something that I picked up uh, from a guy, and I'm trying to, I need some help tracking down how it was supposed to work. Well, I, I saw the switch, and it made me think, oh, yeah, it's a 9-volt. Yeah, so it's an active loop. It's an active receiving is, loop. Is, is, so, because it's got, it's got a BNC on the end of it, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, am I supposed to hook this up to an HT, which means I need an adapter, but... Um, or HF. You you basically hook it up to wherever you're having noise problems. It's a receive only antenna. You don't want to transmit into it. So leave the right, mic yeah. off. So mm -hmm. it, it's an active loop. It's directional. Uh, so it's going to be, that looks bi-directional. You probably still need an offset attenuator, particularly as you get closer to where the noise source may be that you can add, you know, 10, 20, 60 dB of attenuation on top of that. Right. Um, but yeah, it looks like an active loop. I I actually have like two act. I have like two active loops that are specifically designed for hunting noise. And I go outside and it's like the noise is everywhere. Where do we hunt? There's nowhere to hunt. It's <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah, no, I I figured I'd need an attenuator, but I I'm like, you know, I wonder if this thing will work. I mean, it was it the board says 1990 on it, but I can't find it. I've Googled it. I tried Google Lens on it. It couldn't. It didn't find anything other than try the IC, and the IC is just a, you know. Well, did you try actually hooking it to a radio and putting nine volts into it? Not yet. <laughs> I need a BNC adapter. You did all of that instead of just plugging the damn thing in and see if it if it would antenna. Well, you know, the, the, those, I, I need the, an adapter. The, I'm, I'm I'm a bad ham. The fact that you said like, oh, I did Google Lens. Like, I didn't even think about Google Lensing any of this crap. So like. <laughs> That's it looks further homemade. Along. Yeah, it looks homemade. So I would just I would just throw nine volts on it and, and chuck it onto an HF uh you know, a shortwave receiver that has a, a an antenna plug is great for sniffing. Anything that has a so honestly honestly, a waterfall is what you really want. So uh you know, uh, uh spoiler alert. My that's seven oh five. No, it's the seven oh five is what you want. Or um a tiny SA. A tiny SA works really well for, oh, for sniffing. Oh yeah, yeah. I need to get I need to get one of those. I didn't know if those. You know, I really need one. Oh, of those. A, a tiny SA. Uh, those are fantastic because they're super wide banded, particularly if you get the the plus. You know, the the larger one, the ultra. 
so you get super wide band and then you can literally use the directional antenna to point around and you would be shocked at what you can pick up it's really really effective do do they come with the adapters for like bnc to because don't, don't they use sma you you're scaring me a little bit you've been a ham longer than me i think and you telling me you you don't have an adapter that can go from bnc to bnc uh, or whatever no, I got I got the barrel connector. The barrel connector there is mine. That was in my old box from. You don't have a BNC <laughs> to PL two thirty nine. I don't. Seriously? I, PL two. You mean a PL two fifty nine? I'm cool. Yeah, two fifty nine. Yeah, PL two fifty nine. Sorry. <laughs> no. It's an SO two thirty nine PL two fifty nine. Who came up with that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, military designation, I think. But yeah. no, I don't. I used to. I lost all that stuff, man, and I I haven't had. What does a that mean? You lost BNC. it like in a boating accident? You lost it? Is it with the uh, with the, the yeah, fire like, like that pubes, Thou right? shall not be named. <laughs> no, no. Well, it, it was in the house in Florida that everything got. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Long story. Yeah. yeah. The reason I'm in Tennessee. Gotcha. But yeah, I need to I need to pick some some adapters up. I need. They're to get cheap a, on Amazon, that? man. They're cheap. They're super cheap. Isn't there isn't there a good set that like ha- comes with a whole bunch of adapters? To, um, you know, yeah, mm. I'll I'll show you the one I got. The, the, the problem is they're like a, it's like over a hundred bucks. Oh, is that like the gold plated ones and all that? No, well, I, they might be, but uh, so it's in this little. This is the HRO special. Okay, this is literally like every adapter. And what it yeah, it, it's this it's this really cool system. I'll. I'll I'll do one. I've got chaos on the on the uh, workbench, but mm. basically, you you take one of these little middle nubbins, okay, and then I, I call them nubbins. That's their, their their technical term. They're they're a double threaded female connector, and then you just go to whatever cable you want. So, is it the so using your image, it looks like it's a BNC. So yeah, we need is. to find we need to so we take the BNC female, BNC female. And we take the all thread here, go on to it. And let's say our radio is the PL259. So we take the PL259, thread it together. And there's your there's your connector. Yeah, that's, that's a hundred that's a hundred dollar set, huh? Yeah. Hundred dollar set, yeah. But Jeff, you were at Huntsville Hands Fest. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, going. yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. gonna go? Are you going? To... I was going to, but now going and working through this property thing, I probably won't be done by then. So oh, I probably man. won't be able to. I'm gonna miss you. I wanted to give you your antenna back. Yeah. Well. So Jeff, if you want me to uh, try and remind you to pick up coax connectors at the Huntsville Hands. Yes, please. Yes. You, you know, by the way, ADD. like I, I don't know, I I don't know of a ham. See, this is the thing. This is this is what scares me. I, I I'm I'm now questioning your 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 ham, like there there's no situation. Now, there's no years. situation. You go to a ham fest and you don't buy extra adapters or other BS. Like I literally. Hang on. So so mm-hmm. hold, okay, hold on. Comment. Go ahead, comment, Mike, and then I'll I'll add my my thoughts. No, no, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, listen, pro tip. Everybody has a, uh, a notes app on your cell phone. I'm only going to tell you what I can, what I do for myself. On my notes app on my cell phone, I have a folder that says ham radio uh, festivals or, or, you know, whatever. Swaps, whatever. In that folder, I have... Everything that I need or want or should look for, the rarities, the oddities. It's not like a new radio. It's like, I need an adapter for this. I need an adapter for that. So I write down as I go through my year or my few months between ham fests or swaps, and I'm like, all right, as we do projects, what do I need? So you open your, your notes app on your phone and you write a note. I need a I need a BNC to PL259. Like, what are a uh, BNC mail to PL259? What a random connector. Why would you ever use that? But for some reason, you need it. So just put it in your notes app. And when you go to the swaps, look at your notes app, and those are the things that you buy. That is such a yeah, good idea. My name's Kate Follow idea. me on Ham Radio Tube for more helpful tips. Back to you, Josh. <laughs> That's great. So I, I will say one of my my favorite of recent adapters is the SO239 to push in PL259. There's no threads. It just you just shove it onto the radio. You yeah. shove it on. I love them. You know who showed me those for the Freaking first egg. time? 
that was the ham radio adventure guy, right? No. Bob from TN07. Oh, really? Yep. I've never oh, seen okay. one of them push on uh, field 259 Dude, before. it's really slick. They're yeah, really cool. cool. So what you're saying is uh, Shane from this side of the radio needs one of those so that his radio doesn't get yanked off to the uh, picnic bench again? No, it, they they hold on really tight. It would pull the radio off, but it, it, you don't oh, okay. have to. You just it, it's a shove on. You don't have to do anything else. There's no twist. It, it's Shane needs power poles on his coax. So yes, for, for some wild like radios that have like weird heat sinks that so the design that some people have come up with where they've got the the threaded connector up against this big aluminum or metal heat sink thing that you can't get your fingers in and twist it on that's fantastic you just boom shove it on there hard shove it on there hard but it's good after that i got a question all right hold on go inside go inside go go no go take a shower go you were screaming for the last like you were screaming for so long with your brother i don't know what happened what do you just mean? go I we heard you on the live stream. Just go inside. Yeah, go, 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 go. Enough. Go. The bad thing is, is I have a a, a, a female into PL two fifty nine adapter are, sitting here. <laughs> so I did buy adapters out in Huntsville. All right. Because I also, I also bought the the opposite of this, the, the male to a female. But, okay. okay. There's a question in the chat. Go ahead, question. Okay. Um, in your box there, you have an inline attenuator. Okay, so I have one of those, and I built a QDX, but I also built the QCX amp. Mm -hmm. So oh. what I did was is the input of that amp is like a two-something SWR, and that's kind of just how it is. And also, I don't want to drive five watts into it. I have a 10-watt version of that BNC. And I believe it's like a 5 dB. And when I use it, it cuts my output down to 1 watt. If I get one that's a little less, uh, you know, of a, an attenuator, I guess like a 3 dB or something like that, and, it, you know, I'm getting maybe 2.5, 3 out to go into that amp, um, can I run that on, like, the FT8, like, uh, duty cycle? Is that, is that going to kind of work long term to kind of help? Because the reason why I'm... I'm kind of looking at it because i i put my rig expert on on the end of it and it puts the swr down to like 1.2 so i feel like it's going to be easy mode for the qdx over time is, it, is that a good idea to kind of you know put it into that so, amp? so help me out because i haven't built that amp I, I think i have that amp i just haven't built it yet uh so you're you have the qrp labs amp and yeah. you have a qdx that you built yep Okay, my son's asking me a question. Hold on, what? On your next video, what are you gonna do for that? I'm not doing that right now. I'm not gonna answer that. Right Coleman, now. close the door. Close the door. Well, hold on. Let Let's get clarification on the amp. So the amp is what a 50 watt amp. It's a QCX 50 watt PA. Okay. And if you you know it's like 20 volts, 50 watts. But if you run it on 13 volts, you get 25 watts. And I built it for 20, and I'm pushing 20 out through the QDX into it. If I put the 5 watts into it, I get about 20 out. And um, I'm going to figure out how to boost the voltage up to get the, you know, whatever that I want. But, like, it's just the input power. They say that 5 watts is a little hot maybe. So I, since I already have that attenuator, I wonder if that's the way to go. But the one I have is a little too much of a good attenuator. But I'm worried about the heat buildup with the duty cycle or if that's... And then it presenting such a great SWR to the radio, I assume it's just absorbing the reflected waves, right, coming right. backwards. Right. And yeah, so, so, it, so it seems like overall good thing, right, if it doesn't burn up. So these these attenuators are not necessarily designed to be like left on a radio. They're designed for like a testing situation where you're you're testing something out. So this little kit is also what I pull from when I'm doing tiny SA testing on like a handheld or something like that. So I don't know that it has continuous dissipation of heat. Right, because yeah. it's it's there for short term testing. I don't know that it's designed for like full. So the duty real cycle issue is the heat output. Build up. Hold on, hold on. So I don't know that it's designed for like full duty cycle output of your radio just going directly into it and then helping okay. to solve that problem. Right. So. so uh, okay, you you give it five watts out of the QDX into the amp. So by the way, you're not going to hurt the radio. 
the radio is not going to get harmed in this situation. It's the amp that might get harmed. And it se- it sounds like it can handle higher power than 5 watts, right? Uh, I think it wants 5 watts input. But, I, you know, people say you kind of want to drive it at, like, 2 or 3 because it doesn't seem to make much of a difference once you get up over the 2 or 3 uh, point. Uh-huh. You know, beyond that, it starts to kind of over... Uh, it could, you know, not have the best waveform, I guess, at that point. Splatter. Yeah, yeah. So... I'm How looking do to they cut the power you lower somehow the power? to the. Well, I mean, smarter to save power and such would be to try to undervolt the QDX, but I built it for nine, so I need something that can kind of take uh, 12 or whatever and maybe, I guess, push it down to like eight or seven and a half or something. But I if could, you built it for uh, nine, it's already it going to have lower output, right? If you built it for if 9 volts for versus nine. the 12 volts, it's going to have a lower power output on the output. No, because anyway. it, you know, it's a different winding, so it's going to... I get I get a solid 4-something out of both of them that I built. Because I use that weird Twisted Sister thing. Like, it okay. really makes okay. a big difference. Totally dumb question. Have you reached out to the creator of the radio and the amp and asked them, like, is this okay? Well, these are kind of... I did do as much reading as I could do on their um forum thing mm-hmm. and so you know their groups i own and so but the the thing was is i i just decided to put that in there to see what would happen at, on a whim and so i put my rig expert on there that gave me a 1.2 i'm like wow you know that really takes that two point something kind of worry out of my mind if this could do it but I, then i started thinking about the heat build up and i was like oh and then when i saw that box and you had one in there i'm like oh perfect time yes this, this would be the time so. that i would con- uh what's his name What's the guy from uh, Hans? Hans, that's right. This would be like where I would just message Hans or make a post. Like, have you made a post on the group? It, it is best practice to run about two and a half, three watts into it. And well, so then why is he people selling under- the damn the thing QDX. with the radios that he's? So they underbuild no, it. No, because it's made for the QCX Morse code. You know. Um, 50 watt oh i see but you can derate it by running 13 volts well, and it, it's 25 watts you can run it with the qdx on its 15 second you know duty cycle so uh, there's your you answer say. but but here's but the thing if you thing. blow up the inline attenuator while the radio is transmitting you could blow up the radio oh it'll go open i gotcha right or short Who knows? Yeah. okay mike go ahead if you put the attenuator in the wrong in, in in line with the coax that goes from the radio, you're also attenuating your incoming signal. Right. So uh, you need you point. really need to put very good problem. point. You, yeah. you need That's to put that uh, in in the switched RF line, um, which you could do by putting a 50 ohm pad in there anyway. Um, it, and you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to worry too much about your, your input impedance if you if you put a pad in line with your switched RF signal. But also, I thought he designed these amplifiers specifically for CW only. But I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, that would be where you'd put your attenuator. You wouldn't want it in the coax line. It has okay. to be after yeah, the no, RF the switch. side is definitely, yeah, yeah I, you know what, it, it kind of went right over my head on that side. Good like, I definitely point, don't want to be Good that point. deaf. Yeah, because that's, and, you know, he added that PTT line on the QDX and the later revs just for that, the little uh, uh, stereo jack. Um, so you could drive an amp on it, and then specifically that, and then he gave the advice to derate it to 25, and then other people kind of took that up, and, uh, um, you know, it, people do it it's a really cool kit it's similar in complexity to the qdx and then with morse code i mean you're getting 50 watts think about the price performance on that it's 48 with the case all right well there you go that's all for me uh good question and so yeah apparently oh hawaii just blew oh no what is that look at this see this is what's cool about grid tracker check this out guys Look at all these signals are all going to BJ12. That is not Hawaii. Oh, Kiribaldi. Oh, Kiribaldi's live right now. So I could point my antenna down there and try and get them. All those like dotted blue lines that you see above my head, those are all contacts that are flying into them right now. So that's pretty cool. I worked them last weekend. So, oh, Shane's here. What's up, Shane? How you doing? So we got a, uh, we got a hot update. Where is I did I uh I 
think we lost it. But uh, Tamitha Scove was live just a second ago. Is she still live? Ed posted that a bit ago. Yeah, I think it was a little while. Is that ago. about that huge CME? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So we we've got some uh, we've got some waves coming at us, guys. Yeah. I bigger... think it's scheduled to hit on the 25th. They said. Kind of, oh, she's kind live of right now. Side, like so we're we're live reacting to Tamitha really live. So I'll say hi. Now, all. predictive science, by the way, um, and I probably we're gonna live react to Tamitha live. There's so many chats going on here. Let me add my where's my chat? Or we'll throw, throw my chat to on top it of it. Fast. <laughs> <Where's>... um, <laughs> let me go. So we're waiting box. to hear the big the big news here. I'm working Fiji on 20 meter T8 right, right now. I got an email from Predictive Science. And these oh guys my gosh, she's got 897 do... people watching. That's amazing. Great job. Was it John Linker? I think John. I tried hitting the Fiji one the other day, um, and I couldn't hit it from the East Coast. Yeah. See, and the latest in, news in is Mr. Callie's right there. The I just saw Dodecanese, or how, however the heck you say that, a minute ago. Dodecanese. There we go. Sure. Saw yeah. them. So I get them all the time, back. though. Maybe it's because you're in Texas. You don't see them as often. So maybe there's something going on. Yeah. Well, so the band, like, I've been doing POTA. I've done, so if you go to, what, four uh, POTAs this week? And uh, three of them were in my car with the ATOS. And, you, they'll, they'll and page, like, they just, show you, I'm, I made a lot of contacts, you know, 80 or 100 exactly contacts each time I went out just sitting in the car. But the, the signals were so just this is weak. what it would look like from space with North being up. And even when I went out with the DX Commander, the latest video that I just posted... I worked every band forty so through what, ten, what, and uh, except for thirty. I, I will. Just, it was it was weak. If if you want to go watch Tamitha, you should to catch the update. Um, the audio is already going through. It's it's YouTube, so it's it's already across. Um, you should be hearing it. But that that's that's funny. Someone says she seems very rattled. Yeah, I, I saw that. She sounds. She she seems like her normal self to yeah, me. Yeah, she seems a consummate professional. She's dealing with live stream business on the back end. So yeah, she's doing a great job. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, okay. So with that said, let let's do this. So let's let's pause for a minute. I'm not going to transmit. We're going to halt all transmissions, and I'm going to try. Oh, you know what? The signals just dropped out. But there's a couple of Pacific Island stations over there, so we're gonna try and we're gonna point the beam over at the. Oh, you know what? They're fighting the gray line right now. Isn't that crazy that Hawaii is? It's just going dark in Hawaii right now. Look at that. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy to think about? It's daylight wow. savings too. So from it, the East Coast, they're six hours uh, behind right now too. It's also getting daytime in Dodecanese, where I'm trying to work right now. And it's only as crazy as you know. We go, we go dark after oh, long the after guys the East Coast is done. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, California is a big space, but the Pacific Ocean is freaking huge. <laughs> like, oh, I know, absolutely. I, I, there, there's always things that like just impress me whenever I think about the expanse of size, and it's the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is so big. And so we're gonna Jody, we're gonna just listen for a little bit here and see what jo see what signals we pull out. Jody has a good point. I and I agree with him. I'm gonna quote him verbatim here. I absolutely do not want to see when she is truly rattled. <laughs> I will head to the bunker. Then. Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I I guess I she probably does get a lot of people that come out that don't really understand like the sun, and they see oh, everything saw... is like just total meltdown situations. I saw a bunch of comments in there just in a little bit of preview that you did that they they have no idea what they're talking. You know, the um, the flat earthers of the world. I I can only imagine what she has oh. to deal with. You, you saw the smoke and ape in there? No, I did <laughs> not. But I, I, I think I saw some of his friends in there. Oh, KMRD, is that, what is that? Is that the... Uh... That's oh, the while well, I was responding. That's the geocron. Alex K nine W eight Z says it's really weird, especially seeing how the Earth is flat. The gray line shouldn't be straight. 
it is right now because we're approaching the summer solstice. So yeah. each hemisphere is seeing the same amount of uh, sunlight. It, it, it's also you based also off have of... to remember we're projecting a round. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On a flat surface. So go ahead, Josh. So I by the way, I actually think the world is flat, but I do okay. have a flat Earth Explorers Club patch um, that I I have just to see if if people get it or not. By the way, like for everybody that thinks that Iceland and Greenland or uh, no Greenland is the size that it is, it is not. The Mercator projection makes it seem much bigger, as does it make Canada seem a lot bigger. And everything else, like particularly the northern areas, the Mercator projection has made people think that certain land masses are just massive in size. That they really are not that big. They're still big, but they're not as big as the as the projections make them seem. That only counts for Merc Mercator projections, though. Other That's things true. in pictures are that big. Yeah. Yeah, just particularly, so the ladies know. Okay. particularly the ladies items. <laughs> particularly items you see in your rear view mirror, Mike. Mm -hmm. Especially and, if they're dinosaurs. And okay. I will say this: the uh, straightest line will be, or will have been, was this past Tuesday when we entered spring. All right, we're going for Fiji. I'm calling them. Mm -hmm. I lost that other. It already worked, now. Fiji. When the when the gray line is like that that that's been the best times i've hit uh, antarctica i don't know why but when it's straight like that i i've had more luck with antarctica jody nailed it in the in the in the he did the Discord chat. that's it so we're making contact here. Oh, I'm only plus 14 to Fiji right now. We're good, guys. I think we might make a fast contact of this one. <laughs> On 20, and we're well, well, well past the gray line. Oh, I've been able to work 20 to like 10, 10, 15, 10, 20 at night lately in Northern California before I, it drops off. Yeah, it's no, been really good. It. I've worked 20 for uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for weeks at a time back in the 90s. That window in the south, uh, that other island just dropped off. Though. That's a bummer. We missed the opportunity on that one. See, how is this not like gaming? This is like a rare opening. This is like hunting a rare grit, like a rare location. It's not near as toxic. That's how. Right. See, I did, a, I did an FT8 faux pas. I I saw oh. this Alaska station in uh, my grid tracker call roster, but as I looked up to my RX frequency window, he's calling CQ zone one. Once I realized that, I hit halt transmit because he's only looking for that one zone. Mm -hmm. He doesn't he don't want to talk to me, mm -hmm. so I just I hit I hit uh, stop. That's that's FT8 mm -hmm. etiquette. That's just like calling CQDX and then getting a bunch of like. U.S. stations coming back to you. It's like, I'm not calling you. I want to work DX. Leave me Unless alone. you're Japan, then you work everyone, no matter who they're calling CQ to. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> I had that this morning. I was I called CQ AU, and I should have said VK, but it was just five Japanese calling me all at once. Uh, you see, that's the problem we have here in California. Well, at least I do. I don't know about Josh and others. You call CQVK, uh, you're going to get at least 20 Japan stations calling you back within seconds. Well, I'm in Washington State, so I get okay. the same problem. Yeah. Well, the, the nice thing about uh, working Japan is if you're uh, if you're Q, if you take QSLs through the bureau. You'll get lots of them from Japan. You do, and and some of them are so. Some of them they they do that vertical. They do vertical style QSL cards, and they don't mm -hmm. put a lot into them. But some of them put like some of their QSL cards are freaking amazing. Some oh, of the yeah. JA calls that I've gotten call uh, QSL cards from are really impressive. Yeah, I worked a uh, special event there, and that is a really colorful card. Yeah, they did the a good job. Crispest. One dollar bill I have ever seen came from a guy in Japan. <laughs> he must he have sent, really wanted your QSL. 
<laughs> he did, but I don't have any made up. I I had a VK station that sent me two dollars, and I'm like, seriously, dude, you're DX. You don't need to send me money. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's what the Japanese guy did. He sent me two one dollar bills. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, cases, I sent it right away to him, but you know, yeah. I was like, I'd already mailed it. In oh, some cases, that. those guys are working all counties, and in some cases, they're working all states, and so you never know what that guy on the other end is working. The why he worked your card right. so bad. He needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Question. That's true. Good point. Go ahead. Question. Yeah, actually, it's regarding the uh, QSL um, cards. Um, I've got a stack of about 150, maybe more, QSL cards sitting here that I have not responded to because I don't have QSL cards. Get a um, I do a, well, I do a lot of Podobroves, and I think I might be doing some rare like DX for some people. And so I'm just trying to figure out the best way to kind of get a, you know, cards and there's, what you guys use there's a couple there's a couple of things nope, i do nope, no, I, 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 I don't want to hear any other answer than amanda from ham, ham nation oh, yeah yeah, she yeah. Here? no she does qsl cards and she does a consultation like oh. service where she'll put together a qsl card for you and she's cheaper than everything i've looked at so i and i will get perfect. the link right now i will get the link right now and you can contact her Josh, one better. Sean, that's the person I told you to check out earlier. Uh, K1 Delta Delta November, Amanda. Yeah. She does absolutely fantastic cards, and uh, I would highly recommend her. And you can customize okay. your cards so, so well. You you can get them so that you know you don't list a grid square if you don't want to and you can fill in whatever the grid square is that you're in so like if you're putting in a different grid square than what you're normally in you can put in all the information manually instead of having it pre-printed or you can pre-print you know a hundred per arc or whatever you want to do oh that's perfect yeah that sounds awesome because like when i do a rare like i, I go to south dakota north dakota and I'm in totally different grids than what I'm normally at for my QTH. And I know people want them. So um, I was thinking about doing special edition cards for my robes. But if I could just do one card and fill in the grid, that would be perfect. And Josh just dropped the link. But yeah, it, the, her stuff is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, so as, as much as – so normally – I'm okay with everybody competing, all this stuff, all that, but like Amanda deserves it. Give give your business to Amanda. I'm okay saying, hey guys, let's just chill and you should you should I, check her out. It's really good. I was gonna say Amanda's a good choice, but if you're if you don't have the money, you don't have the money, you can go and buy you know, you can go print your own if you oh, have I see. to. I get a I get a lot of I, them that are printed out that somebody printed them on a laser printer, they're just black and white, you know. I, I am almost I'm almost curious if you factor in like ink cartridges and paper. Like he's got a hundred to go through. I don't I'll write know. Check. I've got more than 150. I'll, write, I'll just write a check and get it done. Okay. I, I have a bo I have a box of stuff I need to get sent out. The worst part is not the cards, it's the postage. So Australia's hearing me. New Zealand's hearing me, but I'm not hearing them. So this could be my noise floor. See, this is this is why, guys. Look, they're hearing me. See all these little pink lines? They can hear me, but I can't hear them right now. Because how do I know? Look over here. I can't yeah, I can't see you. any of their stations right now. So there's no point in me screaming at them because they can't hear. And if they're trying to contact me, I'm wasting their time, right? Noise for, right? Really important. So hopefully the I get my EMI guy out here next week and or whenever he can come out here and check out what the hell's going on. Now usually hey. I have the opposite problem. It's usually I can hear them and they don't hear me. Do you me. know that how badly I fire. want that problem? I want to hear stations I can't make right. contact with than the other way around. I, I well, would you're, love you're that. You're in the big city, man. <laughs> I'm not, though. I'm 20, I'm, I'm like 30 miles plus out of downtown L.A. proper. I'm not in a big city. I'm just in the damn suburbs, and we're all packed in like, you know, yeah. like yeah. rats, and, and there's high tension lines all over the place and they just have a little breakdown in those connectors and it, it screws the lines. It, it screws everything up for everybody. Well, and that's so, the reality. That's what I wonder. I think I wonder if that's what's causing my noise floor is the high tension lines that are on the other side of the highway from me, you know, and he's my, my buddy down the street, my AC, he's closer to that as well. So those high tension lines, those are carrying um, what, what's the voltage on those things? 
750 or something like that. Two or three kilovolts. But the the thing about them is, though, those are the ones that the power companies are most likely to maintain because they do lose so much power when they have arcing. Yeah, and yeah. So well, and they, they, they actually those want things to fix really. Them. And, and if you walk near them and you hear the buzzing, your radio really doesn't. So I actually have a good question. Uh, does anyone have an I any idea as to why with the same exact setup, I cannot hear or talk to Australia, New Zealand from my QTH, but with the same exact setup, two blocks away at the baseball field, I can hear them and talk to them. Are and, you using and, vertical or are you using horizontal? Uh, horizontal and fed half wave. Get a Poseidon. Are, are you going exactly the same direction? Exactly. Two blocks away? It, yeah. Exactly. I duplicate the setup one to one across both sides with no issue, and two blocks away, I can get down to Australia. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mike. You only need to be quarter wave out of phase for the signal to completely drop off. Have you ever been like outside and it's raining on the other side of the street and it's sunny where you are? Yes. Literally, my, my, that's kind of what, what it sounds like. Yeah, Florida, yeah. you get it. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm from yeah. Florida. Yeah, that be Mike, soil rain, makeup? rain in California, really? <laughs> um, no, uh, no, I get what you're getting, getting at, though. Um, I don't think it could be soil makeup because we're on nearly the same Adobe land across the whole area. You, you'd be surprised, though. I mean, you, you can check probably. Either the USGS or or maybe your local states. I'm sure the state probably has maps that show soil composition. You could have, a, if you're two blocks away, you could have an entirely different soil composition. I, up on my hill, have a different composition than down the end of my driveway. I'll have to check that out. I didn't think of that because, you know, we're, it's Sonoma County, California. We or on Adobe Rock everywhere, basically, here. So, thank you. I'll have to check that out and see if that might be contributing to it. Uh, if, you, if you tried, like, moving it quarter wave? Uh, I've gone a quarter wave north-south, <laughs> basically. Yeah, it, 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 I'll, I'll give you the, the, the short story. Is if you if you you're on two meters, say, and you're picking up a station and you're using your elbow, keep your elbow on your side, right, and you can see the S meter on your hand out, and you've got full deflection, right. If you turn so that you've now, if you turn your body so you can now broadside to the signal, the signal will have gone. I, I just mean, turned your body ninety degrees, so don't 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 swim for the antenna night at forty five degrees. I, I mean, in all real, and in all that, real, that's how direction finding is done, and that's exactly why some signals appear. Because you literally, it might be the fact that as it approaches where you are in your home location, it's gone out of a vertical or horizontal phase to your antenna. So, yeah, it might be you put a vertical up, you'll hear it. It literally might be just the fact the, the lie of the land is causing it to turn. Or some skyscraper, you know, some uh, uh, barn a half a mile away. It's just changing the face of it as it approaches. But, a hundred, you know, 600 yards down the road, where you say your other place is, you're not getting that path where it's being turned by the local barn or the or, or whatever. Or, yeah, or a mountain is, or a hill or whatever, yeah. Is, is there some uh, reason, Frank, that you're against running a vertical? Uh, no, uh, I could run a vertical. I have, I have a 6, six BTV. I just have to piece it together. Mm -hmm. I have no instructions oh, wow. for it. I just have to piece it all together and make sure I right. put it together right. And I just did a uh, measure on the map for Google uh, 
it's only like 388 and a half meters between my house set up and where I am at the local park. Yeah, you're that face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the thing is, Frank, I mean, it, rather than worrying about the 6B TV, just get one of those Poseidons. And you don't even have to buy it. Just build one. They're not that hard to build. Just build it. Yeah, and yeah see that's how it true. Works. Or stick a quarter wave vertical up. All right, I'll have to uh, try that and see what happens. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. I got an, a, a change of topic question that okay. I feel like this group would be good for. Go ahead. I have a Microsoft Surface Go and a THD72. I just got the USB hub for it. Now, I'm not a prepper but I like to be able to use my radios to their capability. Packet is one thing I have never done. What would be a good way to get into that with a D72? Um, so D72 can run as a KISS terminal. So if okay, so just like a MobiLink? No. No. Oh, yeah. Yes, it runs like a Moby Link. You don't need the okay. Moby Link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, correct. Um, so you would need a laptop running something like Direwolf as a packet repeater if you were running Linux. That would be the way to go. That would probably be. Nah, I'm a fun. Windows guy. Mm, okay. Direwolf runs on Windows. I've done it. Yeah. I, I, okay. Well, then try that. You can do. Uh, you can do packet TNC with a a Direwolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ran uh, Direwolf on my Flex, which, I mean, through, you know, Smart SDR. But anyway, I basically, th there's a download for Direwolf uh, for Windows. Because I was going to run uh, Vara FM on it for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to get the Surface. The Surface is going to be my, my POTA logger and my it's going to be married to my TX500 and whatever HT I take out, but I wanted to at least get the WinLink stuff and maybe some packet stuff set up on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, the, the thing about, and this may be my confusion, but when, what does WinLink and a TNC have anything to do with each other? It's, it's a mode of operation in WinLink. You can do packet with WinLink. So uh, WinLink is packet. No, it's it's well, one of the is... options that you can do with WinLink. You can do packet, you can do var FM, you can do var HF, you can do RDOP, you can do a myriad of different ways of doing WinLink email traffic. Mm, you just have to decide okay. what you're what you want to do. Yeah, because uh, among many others in this channel and in the chat, Josh inspired me to spend money on a MobiLink TNC4. So I have that for all my other handhelds, um, but I haven't messed with the Kenwood in depth at all. So I'm really curious as to getting that going. Yeah, I've got a question about WinLink if, uh, if when this is done. Yeah, I, I'm I'm about I, I gotta go take care of some kid issues here. So um apparently Leia uh had to go do some work stuff and I am the only adult in the house and the kids are screaming and going non like nuts. So I gotta wrap up after I think this one. So go ahead. All right. So has anybody ever played with tactical call signs in a win link? No, that's a very esoteric question. Okay, isn't it? I, 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 Tactical call it? signs. What does that mean? Like, it, I'm running a man pack and an AR-15 and about 300 rounds of ammunition, and I need to report in with an email that I'm getting low on ammo. Like, what does that mean? Well, so ta 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 tactical call signs are more like uh, EOC operations or instant command op type people like short-term operation but permanent yeah yeah HQ like you type thing like if i'll use you and me as an example if you were incident commander and i was a control op it would be ki6naz ic to kg6 nlw control 
Okay. And okay. So that's that's for tactical. Oh, so in. this is yeah. all this is all point to point. This is all point. Well, to point no, no. Way. Actually, tactical call signs do not work under point to point on Windows. Really? Okay. Yes, they are only for for regular. Um, they're not for point peer to peer. Okay. Um, so in this particular case, it's it's for I'm trying to come up with a, I came up with a tactical call signs so that when people want to check into our net via WinLink, that they can um, the goal is they can send it to our tactical call sign instead of sending it to anybody specific or everybody specific. Or oh, four of us pick them up. It's like a group then, call. It basically, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And then, like, if you have a hospital net, you would have you might you might come up with a temporary tactical call sign. This would be this is a more permanent tactical call sign. Gotcha. But but yeah, like for hospitals, you might have you know Blunt County Hospital, and then you might have you know this one Sweetwater Hospital, and I'm naming ones around here. But you know that would be like a temporary tactical call sign. But like your NCS might have a tactical call sign, and that way. No matter who the operator is, whoever is that active operator can pick up that traffic for that specific tactical call sign. And that's when you get and, the email back that says, please remove me from this email group? <laughs> not not quite, but I'm still trying to get it to work right. I'm getting the email forwards from winlink.org, but I'm not getting the uh, – I'm not being able, I'm not able to pick up the, the traffic on Winlink Express, so that's, that's why I was curious. At any rate, it's, it's, yes, it's so esoteric and – I'm wondering if what's his name over here in Tennessee is uh, maybe somebody I to reach out to on that. I, I love all this, all these fake call mm. signs. My tactical call sign yeah. is fake. Well, Adam. well, the thing the thing about the tactical, if you se- if you send out an e- if you send out an email to a tactical call sign, that's it still has your call sign attached to it. And if you are like a station that's using the tactical call sign, it does still use your call sign, and then it also has that tactical call sign as well. If you're, but you have to enable it. It's kind of, it's a little quirky to enable it, but because you have to go into settings and re-enable and say update, and then then it let then it, then it will use your tactical call along with your your regular call. And um, yes, Jeff, I would suggest uh, Smart Jason would be a good point of contact for. That's that's that. probably who I need to get. Yeah. To. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 the WinLink guru. I know he's done a bunch of stuff, but. At any rate, well, that's all I got. I just, you know, I'll let there you go. go. Hmm. I do have a question, but I don't know if we. How much? Have time how much time do you think it takes? I don't know because uh, it's with my seven hundred five. I. Uh, uh, maybe okay. When, shoot it. Go when, for it. when I hit the button, the power button, mm-hmm. it blinks three times green and then goes off. Like if you hold it down, or you just click it. E- either way. Send really? it to me, and it just started. I'll, I'll test it for a while. Okay, I want to see. I want to mm-hmm. see if I, let me see. Let me see what mine does. Hold on. Now that mine's uh, let's let's uh, let's unearth it from my my Pilo connectors. I've kind of abused so, my seven hundred five. I gotta be honest. I love that box, so I want one. I I need that's I need to get play, that's my like lure that. box. That was a lure box I wasn't using, man. So okay, so there's Don, power Don, on. It just it just blink the blinks three times and then stops working or shuts yeah. off. I don't know. I don't know if it's shut off or not. Okay, so the mine's charge officially light on. Is still on. So charge yeah, light. That okay, char- so- that light right there that's on, that green one, blinks three times and goes off. The the power light. Yeah, the power light. Okay, so I'm going to... The I'm gonna... charge light, or that, that charge light just goes orange, so it's charging, but... Yeah, so mine doesn't do that. That's true. Mine doesn't do that. Mine just goes from green to off. Is it a firmware update maybe you need to do or something? Never heard of anything. N- never heard of a firmware update on the 705 per se. Uh, I mean, I suppose, but I've not. I this the, uh, Don. This is actually one I would call ICOM on because I'm kind of curious what it is because I don't think it's a published. I've never heard anybody yeah, talking well, about I, this. I, I mean, I, what I'm getting beginning to feel like is I got a lemon because I burned two batteries in it, or, or the batteries went bad in it, and. Uh, you know, I finally got an aftermarket battery, and that one seemed to work. But now I haven't used it in a while, and I took it out of the box, and I took it down to the property to use it to listen to the on the in the property, and it blinks three times and goes off. And so I ended up. I thought maybe it was That's the battery weird. that I brought with me, but I plugged the FTDX10 in, and that came up and worked just fine. Okay, so uh, Don, real quick, it's the 
power indicators. Yeah, the power button, the green, the power button, right, or the button, or the, the one on the left right next, next to the, to the power, power button. button. Yeah. yeah. It is in screensaver mode. Oh, it is in the how, settings. How, how could you, how could it be that? Or, well, so, wait, I'm sorry, Don. Did you not see the flying toasters that were flying on your screen? No, when it no, was left I'm afraid alone I did. It was just a, just a black screen. I mean, it may be that that's all it is. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, Don, what the I'm hell does that mean? The, screensaver I'm, mode on a radio. I'm not going to lie. Frank <laughs> helped me with my ID50 issue. I think he just helped you with your 705 issue. Could be. I'm looking at the instruction, the basic instruction manual in English. Power indicator blinks green while the transceiver is in the screensaver mode. But the, and what, then what goes off. Mean? What does screensaver mode mean, though? What does that mean? Well, wait a minute. Your radio turns off, so you can't he, even turn it on. He's powering it off. He's powering it off. So the screensaver on battery pack sets the screensaver function when using the battery pack, and it auto. This function activates and automatically turns off the screen when no operation is performed no. during oh. that period of That's time. Not That's not it. That's not it. No. Because okay. this is not this it. is like I've taken it out of the box after I haven't used it for a while. And I reach down to and, and I've plugged it into external power, by the way. The charge light is on, and I go over and hit the power button to turn it on. Blinks three times, and then that's it. That's all I see. So I don't know if it's like actually running and the screen's out. I mean, how, how would I even know? Is there it's maybe a, a, like an internal battery, memory battery that that might that's, be that doesn't matter? Relevant? He's got external power plug. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like like the battery for you know. No. Memories and stuff. No, maybe I don't like a, like something that holds the memories or anything. Even if that yeah. was the case, when you plug external power in, it should it should bypass that battery. Yeah, okay. Don, okay. Just, just for giggle, Don, have you taken the SD card out? No, um, I haven't done any debugging on it. Profile? Yeah, I haven't have done you, any debugging. Have you saved it's actually profile? still out in the car. Oh, yeah. All right. But, yeah, yeah okay. I, I mean, I just what wanted you're to doing, ask What you're quick. experiencing yeah. is not normal. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I want to say that. Like that. Here's another one. Uh, the transmit, receive, relay, and light just start cycling off and on every seven seconds. Does that sound like what no. you're having? No. Mm -mm. Somebody said no. CMOS you hit the power battery. button. It flashes three times. Goes that that goes out, and then that's it. Done. And the three times are fairly quick. Not not like uh, rapid fire, but you know, just on, 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 and then done. That's weird. That is weird. Uh, is there a CMOS battery on 705? That, that, that's what, what I was asking. What Jeff was asking, yeah. Not that I'm aware of. This is one of those things. CMOS? I mean, I don't use my radios it, it, it every day. It doesn't so. do anything wrong. It's not performing incorrectly, right? It's not losing time or anything like that? Or it, Well, how can I tell if the screen never comes on? Wait, the yeah, what he's saying is it doesn't turn on. Oh, it won't. You can't even use it. It no. Oh, I thought you were going from on. the on position to the off position, and it was no, 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 no. no. I'm trying turning it on. Oh, yeah. You you got to call Icon. You got to yeah. Yeah, you no, got a problem, great. man. You got a problem. Maybe 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 look up a factory reset key no, combination. No, no, well, no, 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 no. I'll do some of the Just things Mike Icon. was talking about, and call I'll Icon. pull the battery and do that, and I'll I'll eventually call Icon if yeah, I yeah. It sounds like you do have a lemon though. To be honest, yeah. It, it sounds like you've been. Yeah. Everything I said, Don. It sounds like you got a lemon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's. I don't know why me and Icom have this little problem with each other, but that's why I love you. The seventy one hundred and the seven thousand. I get a works beautifully, but I will fight you. Yeah, Icom it's, 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 to the death. It's. I, I, I do I like. like I like both of those radios completely, totally. I, I like them both, but to assume that like mm -hmm. any one radio is like out to get you is like Oh, on, I know. I'm on. just kidding. Okay. Yeah, I'm kidding. Okay. Yes, of course. I, I hope so. Totally. I hope so. I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad to hear that. I am loving this twenty seven thirty A. And of course, thanks to Robert, although yeah, he's probably dropped, but yeah, it's a that's a nice radio. So, Don, apparently you're not the only one having this problem. Someone else had it uh, two years ago. And they sent it back to ICOM, and ICOM charged them uh, $2,000 to fix it. Is that right? 
Uh, it was apparently under warranty, and they took it back to HRO to get it swapped out. Yeah, no, mine's not under warranty. I've had it for a good year, and it's worked fine other than the batteries that went out in it. But even when those batteries were out, I could plug it into power, uh, external power, and it would Let's work just fine. Let's talk about those batteries for a second, Don. What happened with those? Uh, right, well, they hold on. literally, they literally stopped taking charge. All right, hold on. I gotta, I gotta wrap things up because I gotta go take care of the kids, and it's already like ten o'clock. So. Right. Thank you, guys. Uh, there was a question from one Kate MRD. I, I didn't do a full quiet live stream on Wednesday, and I, I'm, I'm sorry. To there it is. There's, there's full quiet. Um, we gotta get back into full quiet. I, but when I did the live stream, nobody really seemed to care that much about it. I, I really enjoy it, but. Oh, we cared. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 we cared. We cared. Okay, okay. We care. So there's there's uh this damn this damn game is so deep. There's people who have like contacted me privately on some information. I didn't get a lot of tips cuz apparently that's a big thing. Um I'm supposed to work my way through it, but they were like, "Yeah, you're you you're real close. You're real close to unlocking the next thing. Keep going, keep going." Uh it Dude. is it is a cool ass game, I got to say. So again, it is a Nintendo game. This is a Nintendo proper cartridge. In fact, I'll, I'll shut it off. Yeah. Um, I'll yank this Hashtag video. we care in the comments if Josh needs to continue live streaming mm. every other Wednesday the full quieting video it's, game. Drop it's literally a in the game. live stream chat right it's now. Hashtag literally a game. we care. We need to turn Josh into a Twitch streamer. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to become a Twitch streamer doing full quiet. Uh, yes. But it's literally a Nintendo cartridge. And... It is the mm -hmm. most advanced Nintendo game I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's radio yeah. based. You literally fight your way to the next ham shack, basically, and have to unlock stuff along the way. It is a really mm -hmm. good Nintendo game. It's and available Josh, on Steam. Josh, I want to tell you. Steam. Yeah. It's available on Steam. So Steam, Nintendo yeah. Switch, and you can buy the cartridge. Go ahead, Mike. Josh, I, I want to tell you as uh, as a friend... Mm -hmm. But more importantly, as a viewer of your channel for literally years, mm -hmm. I can go on YouTube and watch full quieting. There's like full walkthroughs in like two hours. Oh, yeah. We want to see you do it. Okay. Absolutely. I, we I want to be that. part of that community <laughs> because I have not watched those. <laughs> okay, I, okay. I watched like the first level and then I was like, no. Josh needs to do this. Okay. Like, this is a thing. Okay. okay. All right. All and right. Look at, look at, there's like five or six hashtag we cares in the chat. So, me and six other people want to see you. <laughs> see, do all it. you, all you five or six other people. <laughs> there, 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 there's, hey, man. There's, have a great night. Say hi to your family, 73K at MRD. It, it's a really fun there's game. There's 10. There's 10 of them, Mike. Well, uh, okay, okay, we'll we'll get back to it. I'll, I'll I'll try and figure out how to do it next week. I don't think I can because with Ham Nation and all that. But uh, okay, it's a lot of fun. I held back no, on playing it. Can. I haven't touched when it. When you can, I I haven't touched it. Although I really wanted to continue because I do I do want to continue. Um, so there there you go. So what if I'm gonna do it? I might as well do it with you. So that that's the way we'll take it. So all right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everybody you. on the. Okay, Sounds good. I heard it. I, I I got the message received. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. All right, everybody on the Discord. Thank you so much for hanging out. See you, Josh. Seventy three. We'll, we'll talk to you 73. next week. Better Thank bring you. that Nintendo game to you know Huntsville so we can play it. Or uh, I'll bring it to the <laughs> uh, to the the HRCC camp out. And that's the, no, I don't. I don't. I, I I'm I'll not going to drag out. That. I'm not going to drag out a TV to try and do that, but. And Bring out a gold version of Full Quiet with, to the park. Are you, it's out of silver. Your mind? It's hey. silver. It's silver. It's silver, whatever. Gold. Silver and gold, silver either way. Hey, I, I've got a TV. I don't know what cabin I'm, you know, what the cabin's going to be like, but there's a TV in every cabin. It may be a different Anybody TV. got a CRT TV they want to hike up a mountain? Uh, honestly, yeah, Adam will do it. But uh, honestly, just get it on the Switch. It's like a couple of bucks on the Switch, and it's like, an amazing game. It's a it's a proper, real, actual radio game. Yes, there's action and all that other stuff, but like it is a radio game. I I'm not kidding. When we're we're literally, you have to VFO around, like with your D pad to move the VFO knob in the right order, and it it's it's mm. fun. It's really fun. So anyway, thanks everybody. All right, seven three. <laughs> go yeah, we, take care of the kids.
73. Oh, I, I, I was going to say, I, I'm probably going to end here and I'm going to make them watch like the first episode of X Men 97. Oh my gosh. There you go. They, oh, there you they go. recreated yeah. the X Men cartoon. It's pretty good. So um, oh, that's it. Take it easy, guys. See ya. 7 3, Josh. Later. All right. That was great talking to everybody on the Discord. Uh, I will be back uh, next week. Someone cares. Thank you. Someone cares. We care. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Boy, a lot going on next week. Uh, I, I've got a birthday party to go to. My, my son is another year older tomorrow. So I will be posting videos, but not doing necessarily anything ham related tomorrow which sunday is normally my ham day but it's okay we're gonna have fun watching kids hurt themselves in a trampoline park hopefully not my kid anyway uh yeah that's about it we'll wrap it up with that enjoy the memes play out 73 thanks so much for watching see ya back into the Nintendo. The, the retro USB is like not... That's it. Take it easy, everybody. See ya.